Good evening everyone and welcome to Cellars and uh, does uh, Elite Dangerous, basically. Um, yeah, got, <coughs> got my intro totally confused there. Um, yeah, welcome to Monday Night Stream slash Dangerous Mondays slash welcome back to Cellars and who hasn't streamed this game for god knows how long and really can't remember how it all works again. Um, yeah, as you probably saw by some of the intros there, there's a lot going on. Any stream that starts with three promo videos um, is obviously going to be quite packed full of stuff. Now I am aware that there may be some people watching this uh, live at the moment because it's streaming and I'm aware that there could be a lot of people watching this on YouTube later on once it's posted to YouTube. Um, so I am addressing pretty much everyone universally. I will note for those of you watching live, once I've finished doing a, a bit of a kind of news update, um, bring everything together type thing, um, I'll be dropping into DJ Truthsayer's uh, stream, which you can have a look at live at the moment at twitch.tv slash DJ Truthsayer. So I'll be there in about 10 minutes, but we're going to have a bit of a look through basically some news. Now, at the start of this video, the little sort of video that I put together called The Return, um, is there to outline sort of why Sellers and Lake as a character is back in the main part of the galaxy again. Um, if you haven't already seen it or you've missed it on the start of the video or you're watching this live and haven't seen it yet then nip over to my YouTube channel that's on there you can have a look as you listen to this. Nothing visual will be happening on screen, this is a pre-recorded kind of motion screensaver thing if you like. Um, but the main thing is there's been some announcements made in, in regards to Elite and I have some feelings about this. Now this may come across as fairly negative but bear in mind that I am a big Elite fan, I am a huge Elite fan, I always will be an Elite fan and my personal feelings on this are subjective. Everyone will get their own mileage from this news and this game and everything that goes with it. My information here is um, my own opinion, not related to any ongoing developments through the game itself or through my own involvement with Frontier for what they're doing. I just have some concerns and I just want to point those out at this stage. Um, the meat of it is E3. Uh, obviously the, the release of the return, the, the 2.4 update was kind of pushed forward there as well. Uh, videos were released, statements were made and interviews were had. One of those interviews was with one Sandro Samarco, the one of the lead devs, or not, if not the lead dev, on the Elite Dangerous the game and he made a few statements on there. Game Revolution, uh, which is GameRevolution.com, which is a sort of kind of online gaming mag if you, don't, if you haven't heard of it before, um, have done an article or two on this and they've sort of broken things down into one particular article called Five Important Things I Learned About Elite Dangerous from E3. Now I'm going to go through them in the reverse order to which the interviewer kind of lists them. Um, kind of a, a reverse order. Um, so we'll start off with the bomb which is this. The console versions will have parity which is cool. I like that. I have no issue with the consoles. I have no issue with console players. I have no issue with the console people wanting to play the game. Anything that pumps money into Frontier's coffers to make this game develop itself forward is good to me. I like this. It will keep Elite going. It will keep the servers alive. It will keep all the PvP, P2P, whatever you want to call the abbreviation for it, going and live and kicking, hopefully into the next decade. So, the 
imp the, the pending PS4 release makes me very happy because it means people who haven't played the game yet are going to get a chance to have a go, and I think everyone should have a go. Incidentally, um, I will point out I am po I, I apologise for the amount of humming and hissing in the background. It is stinking hot today, and I have two fans on, one industrial strength fan under the desk, and one small fan in the background. And ironically, the small fan in the background is actually louder than the big fan under the desk. Oh well, hey well. So apologies for the humming noises. I also have the fan on the computer is running at full blast, and I haven't even put the game on yet. So, yeah, I'm a bit worried about that. If things overheat, then you'll find very quickly. So, yeah, I'm happy with I'm happy with the console versions having parity, that makes me happy, it means everyone's going to get the same experience and uh, it means no one's going to miss out, because I think the Xbox community has been kind of missing out on a few things at the moment um, in terms of updates and I'm glad to hear that this is not going to be the case going forward. The next bit of news is that Season 3 will be iterative. Now this indicates a different purchase model uh, for the season updates for the for the various different updates that come through now that i think is a good thing um but the way that they intend this to be taken is that there will be different updates to different things uh, alongside the game so elements of the game that haven't been updated as yet for example some of the um content that's already there that isn't quite right so smuggling and black market stuff is one of the things that was quoted uh, they are just generalized kind of there's no specific model to them there's no variance in that model in different environments it's all one particular thing that happens and it happens in one particular way hopefully that'll change um, if it does change that'll be good we like it if it changes um, if there's more diversity included into the way that that works and there's more of a personal aspect to it then it will it will evolve it into something that may be quite immersive which is good immersion is always good in a game no matter anyone out there goes oh I'm not immersion in a sarcastic way um isn't really looking at this game as a game they're looking at it as something they can just waste time on um it's an experience any game if you want to be engaged in a game and carry that game forward and be interested in that game going forward then you have to have some kind of immersion in it otherwise you're going to lose interest you lose motivation you drop off by the side and it's just another seven gig of crap on your hard drive you're never going to look at again which is bad very bad so yeah the iterative, iterative updates mean that a lot of the content that so far has been slightly neglected like that kind of that kind of thing and um it will overhaul some of the ways that different things work now one of the things that i'm quite happy to think about is that exploration might get a bit of a, a kick up which brings us to the next point which is exploration will be getting lots of attention now this is good especially in light of the arrival of the Thargoids which is what the return subtitle of the thing is all about S exploration has I have always said that I like doing exploration because it is a very relaxing and um, time consuming type of thing to do it's the, basically been the focus of quite a lot of the th things that I've done on this stream because I do enjoy the exploration. It's a chill out session for me. It means I can sit and have a chat with my mates, it means I can talk to everybody on stream, I can have a bit of fun and I can find stuff and I can go on this quest, my, my never ending quest to find um I don't know, just increasing the resolution. Um my never ending quest to find Earth like planets on my route around the galaxy. So I like exploration. I do like exploration. Um, if it's going to be overhauled, then yes, that is going to be good as well. Because I do admit it is kind of bland. Um, you essentially get to fly around a system, honk at it, essentially wait for a little bar to fill up, and you've explored that planet. Not particularly realistic, given the fact that you can also do it through a star, or through another planet, or from X amount of thousands of miles away. That's not particularly detailed scan, really, is it? So I don't think that's really exploring. I think, from what they've said, Frontier is aware that there's a bit boring, that it is a bit boring, sorry, um, and wants to put some of his resources into making sure that it will have some more content in it. This is very good. I like the sound of that. My ultimate goal for exploration, if Frontier's listening, would be to have the ability to basically just grid search a planet or grid map a planet and find interesting things on there 
create waypoints from existing points of interest on there and just basically do stuff. Um, if you map X amount of a planet, you get X amount of money. I think that is one of the good things to look for. So, yeah, that makes me happy. I'm really, really happy about that. Um, I would love exploration to become more involved, be, be actually become more of a, not a job, but not a chore as such especially, but become more of a thing that people can do. That makes me a very happy chappy indeed. So, yeah. So the next thing, a slightly controversial thing, and I must admit, out of all the things that have been discussed online since this, since this article went out, this is the one that's been kicking off the most kind of feedback, is that there's a big book about the Thargoids. Um, the statement made, essentially, is that Sandro has said that there is a big, thick book. Um, I don't know if it's Sandro that said this or not. I'm, I'm making that assumption because it was obviously Sandro that's been interviewed by the guy. Um, but apparently there's a big, thick book about the size of a telephone director that's full of information about the Thargoids. Um, which means that the information that we have scratches the surface completely. Um, I know some of this information. I know where some of the Thargoid background is because I'm, I'm kind of in the opinion at the moment that if there is a big thick book then there is a very, very small amount of my contribution in there from when I was doing the writer's guides for the, um, the, the writer's packs way back in the Elite Kickstarter. Elite Ninja's Kickstarter. So I'm, I'm assuming that some of that information has been amalgamated into this great big book. If that's the case, then I'm happy, because it means that some of the lore that I know of and that I know about has made it through into the ongoing development of the game, and that makes me quite proud. And I would thank Frontier for that opportunity yet again. However, we have seen quite a lot of information over the last few years that contradicts a lot of the stuff. Um, now one of the things that I did realise is that there repeated statements about Elite Dangerous being a reboot of the Elite Universe. Now I have on fairly good authority that this isn't the case, that the game is actually a sequel and that the previous games did happen, they just maybe didn't happen exactly the way as outlined in the in the content of those games. And that's more to do with technical shortcomings with those games and the, and the technology that was available at the time, so 1984, 1991, all that kind of stuff. There wasn't the technology there to create the photorealistic, correctly, scientifically rendered universe that we're looking at today. But this reboot concept keeps cropping up. Now, News World grabbed hold of the Game, Revu the Game Revolution article and have again repeated this reboot statement. Um, their take on Game Revolution's article, the, the bit that I'm talking about now, is that Frontier Development keeps a massive tome in its Cambridge office with a full history of the Thargoids, and that trove of information covers a timeline that includes both the original Elite games, the 2014 reboot, and all of the in-universe time between. Now, this is something that Frontier need to nip in the bud. Which is it? Why are they allowing articles like this to say there's a reboot going on? Because it's misleading people who want to look at the game. It's misleading the fans of the original games who are getting into this game, who are, who are perhaps already into this game, like myself. Because of my involvement with writing an, writing an RPG which does contain some lore and some background details about the universe, this, break, this when I first heard this, this brought me up to a screaming stop. And this was during the whole time of trying to get this book rewritten and try and get the second draft in and so on. So it has, it's affected the productivity for the RPG to an extent where, even with all the different hell things that were going on at the time, it knocked me back a fair amount. I had to... In a sense, I should maybe have been more communicative with Frontier during this point, but I'm not going to say why I haven't been because that goes into far too personal issues at the moment. Um, but essentially, this is a game-changing statement. And this is this is literally, <laughs> in two ways. Because it, it changes the background information of the universe that we all know and love. It changes the concept of what Elite Dangerous actually is. And it changes all of the tie-in fiction, not just the RPG, but it also changes the concepts for the previous novels. It also changes anything for any novels going forward, including Premonition by Drew Wagar. I'm not sure how that's affected him, because I haven't really brought it up with him. I do know that conversations have been had where 
other people I've spoken to are not particularly sure what's going on with this. And as I say, it's a bit, it's a bit strange why Frontier haven't publicly said this is not the case, this is not a reboot, this is a thing. Um, to the point where, even though I have been told by someone at Frontier that the reboot thing is a misnomer, I do wonder why it's allowed to, to go through there. So that's basically where I'm going to go on that. This needs to be clarified. Um, I'm, in, I'm actually interested to see what comes back from um, the second draft review for the RPG. See how much of that needs to get changed in light of this reboot slash alternate history slash elite never happened trend that seems to be happening happening at the moment with the content so we need to keep an eye on that and uh, as I say this this is the thing that concerns me in a sense the most because it's load related and I'm as you know I'm the biggest bloody fan and collator and pusher of lore for elite that I think the river is um, I jokingly refer to myself as the lore master I'm the person that knows most about the lore in a sense before elite dangerous came along this was I, I would say that was true um, because I put a lot of the stuff together that people used. Frontier, I, th I don't think, like that idea that one person has come up with some lore and has been branded as that, and I don't think they like that label. But however, if people are coming, are, are needing reference material or needing information about a certain thing, then I can't help that they come to me because I do know the things that go on. Ultimately, um, if you're looking at actual hard, fast canon lore as far as Elite Dangerous is concerned, this is probably no longer the case because I think internally they've carried the history of the universe into a direction that they are not telling anyone. The changing of the canonical ending to Frontier First Encounters, for example, is one point where that's diversified. Some of the boys that are around Lave and Tianisla and various different places that outline some of the background information about those systems and about the universe in general also contradicts what has been established previously in lore. Hyperspace technology, the history of Lave, um, and the history of the Thargoids all seriously diversify from what was in uh, my RPG. So I have had to kind of balance some of that off. And I'm hoping that the second draft revisions that come back from Frontier will clarify some of that. And I've asked certain questions that hopefully will clarify that for me so that I can go through for the third draft, which no doubt will be required, and say, right, this is, this is where these things balance off. And I'm hoping that some compromise will be made. <coughs> Excuse me, throat totally dried up there. <coughs> so, uh, so that's that. And the other point is this one. Now, as far as gameplay is concerned, this is the one that's kicked off the most negativity, um, especially amongst people involved with the Kickstarter and the promises made in the Kickstarter and all that kind of stuff. Atmospheric planets aren't coming anytime soon. Atmospheric planets were something that was promised very early on. Um, it's... Oh, it's problematic. Part of the key thing that we wanted and that Frontier stated would be part of the concept would be atmospheric well, would be globally planet landings, no pun intended, global planet planet landings. Who thought I was Welsh? Oh, I promise I wasn't going to engage with the chat while I was doing this, but there you go, that, that's, that's caught me. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would have to go back through the communications and the videos and the updates and all the sort of stuff through the, the Kickstarter, but it, it's firm in my mind that Frontier were firmly in a position to say yes we're doing atmospheric planet landings you will be able to land on planets as you wish they were designing systems they were designing planetary layouts they were designing cities they had a specific set of city ideas for each different faction um, the planetary cities and the lights and so on were all circular for um, the empire and the street layouts were square for the federation and they were kind of random and haphazard for that for the uh, independent worlds a little bit too specific because obviously evolution of cities and things like that don't go quite that simply but it, it all indicates that there was a very keen drive towards making sure that the planetary landings could happen and now gradually over the last year or so they've kind of said well it's going to be quite hard to do it's going to take a bit of time 
And now they've backpedaled even further by saying it's probably not going to happen in the immediate future. Now, the, you know, but, uh, the, the guy that did the interview with, some, with Sandro basically said um, it's going to be a long time before atmos atmospheric planets will be interactive. This is, this is the inference that the interviewer has made. Um, Sandro directly said it's something the team could do but would require an incredible amount of work. And as they see it, there are other things they can develop that would perhaps be more profound to gameplay and content. I strongly disagree. Um, Elite evolved into Frontier. Frontier was the second game in the series and it had planetary landings. Okay, they were samey and so on, but we didn't care. We had planetary landings. Um, now we've taken a step back with no lore that says otherwise and no in-game explanation for why we can't land on atmospheric planets just an in-game description so they haven't couched it around anything like that which kind of says to me that there is a potential that they were originally planning on it and haven't really decided to comment on it at all I think they're losing something major here and I think if they are not careful they're going to find other games are going to start to overtake them No Man's Sky came out Buggy as hell though it was, and ridiculously simplified though it was, it had planetary landings. It had procedurally generated creatures and foliage, flora and fauna if you like. It managed to do it. The only thing it couldn't do, or didn't do, was planetary populations. We don't have to do planetary populations right away. I mean, for God's sake, why the hell can't we just have landing on atmospheric, on, on, on unpopulated planetary uh, atmospheric planets. Why not let us land on any planet that is not inhabited? So at least then we've got the atmospheric stuff sorted out, we've got the water land thing sorted out, we've got all that stuff sorted out, and you can work on all the cities and populations and all that wandering about later on. Um, let us land on the bloody planets, let us have a look at stuff, let us do some fantastically awesome screenshots. Um, and yeah, we'll be happy. That's it. That's all we need. Um, I don't really see what what the difficulty is. They say it would be quite a, an incredible amount of work, but the framework for it's already there. You've got the actual physical detection of a ship landing on a planet there. All you need to have is the bloom, which you already have for some of the asteroid belts anyway. You already have the concepts of getting through the atmospheric thing itself. You've got the, the, the glide function, which would be the best way to transition between it anyway. Um, and flight simulators have been doing it for years. Even Star Citizen's got it now. Even they've licked the planetary transitions. So I honestly don't know why Elite Dangerous has fallen so far behind. Um, and that, to me, because there are two things I have always said that I want in this game. The two things I've always said have been planetary landings and getting out my goddamn ship. So there you go. <sighs> yeah, that's the lot. Um, I've gone over. I was supposed to be finished at ten past so I could go into Graham's stream and I've now pissed him off by being totally fucking late. So I'm going to draw it to a close there and I'm going to simply say that essentially all the comments here are my own. Um, I don't mean any malicious content or malicious intent by them. I'm voicing an opinion. As far as I'm aware, the community, or at least sections of the community, are with me on these ideas and with me on these opinions. So cool, but some people aren't. Which is fair enough as well. Um, all I will say is that 70% I like the direction that Elite Dangerous is going and the other 30% I'm not over impressed um, I, I want planetary landings I want atmospheric planetary landings I want exploration to be improved um, and I want the Thargoids to be a decent enemy, but we'll talk about that later but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition over to uh, the other screen uh, I'm going to go on to Graham uh, DJ Truthsayer stream now and connect with him through TeamSpeak so you might hear some weird goings on in the background so I'll just connect to that which should hopefully get me to the right thing this looks like it might be the one if anybody has any questions or anything then pop them in the chat Just hoping that we're online now. I don't think I can move myself around. Nope. So I'll have to wait for uh, Graham to notice that I've popped in. So, yeah. So, hi Stephen Curry. Glad to see you. Hello Garzini. Glad to see you. 
Hi Stoops SX or Stu Pezx, whatever. Whoa! I'm in. <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm great, thanks. Technology. I did. Yeah, I do that quite frequently. <laughs> Correct. That's one of the things, yeah. Hang on a sec, I'm actually only half listening because apparently I'm not getting any sound from uh, TeamSpeak on the stream. That's right, yeah, pretty much. Not on default or whatever you're using oh, for headphones. Yes, try that. Probably can't hear us, but okay. Right, try that. Let's see what happens there. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, the sound, sellers the sound quality has certainly changed. I and I have audio output coming coming from your side by the look of it now. Ah, there we go. Let's see if that actually worked. I think it may have. Yay! Yeah, excellent. Right, see all Hello, those nice sellers things to me again. Stream. Yeah, I, I've, I was about to say, I've just been saying all sorts of lovely things about Sellers and pointing out to everyone quite how much this chap knows about elite lore and everything. Um, and, 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 and you didn't hear a word of it. I, I, I was doing nothing but singing his praises. Um, along with Sellers and as well, everyone, we have uh, two of the best streamers uh, to do with Elite Dangerous. Um, so, in fact, this evening we, we just have a... a Twitch All Stars team, yeah. really. The two, the um, two best straight. What? So you and Malik then? Uh, well, we we have we have myself, <laughs> we have you... Malik, we have Commander Human, and we yeah, have Selazan. See, as no, much you're as I'm not I love an elite to, streamer, as much as I love to get involved with stuff still, and I like to join in with conversations and stuff, I just hardly, I don't play the game that much anymore. No, I know, but when you do, you're still you're still up there. I'm afraid. Just um, <laughs> for the follow Talman. <laughs> now, um. I asked Sellerson on because there's been a lot of new information coming out of Frontier regarding the Thargoids and whatnot. Indeed. And it isn't consistent with stuff that we knew in the past, to say the least. Um, and on stream at the moment, we're trying to get a sort of a hold on where exactly the lore is lying at the moment. And we don't know. 
And so that's why I've asked Sellers and on to sort of see if we can't work out a bit more, a, a, a bit more precisely where things are at the moment because I'm I'm a bit stumped. So the first question, Sellers, and was there a war between humanity and the Thargoids? It depends on where you read. According to me, yes, there was. This happened in the the, the original lore stated that it was in about twenty eight to twenty nine hundred, and then uh, yeah. it carried on until the elite. Era and then went away again, because Inra came along in about thirty-one fifty and kicked everyone's ass. Um, I've got my dates for the Thargoid War, and and this is where, like straight away, we we from from what from what I've been able to piece together, and from what is is known beforehand, um, my dates for the Thargoid War are completely different. Like I've got first contact in like thirty fifty. That's interesting because there's a whole different set of things going on at the minute. There's different information in different places. There's a there's a beacon in the game that says the first contact was in the thirty in the three thousands. There's an article on Galnet that says the first con the first official contact when the Thargoids became known was thirty one twenty five, which is yeah. the elite era. Yeah. Um, and obviously the the lore as we understand it already, that I'm the supposed expert at says that that was when we actually kicked their ass and that we'd, we'd been fighting them for about 200 years. So at the moment, I don't know what to believe. And I have, obviously, I've, I've submitted the RPG with a kind of amalgamation of some of these ideas in there and said to Frontier, sort, can you help me sort through this? What's actually going on? What's the truth? What's not the truth? And until I get that through, then I, I don't know. So to clear this up, you haven't seen the Thargoid tome that they're talking about? I have not seen the Thargoid tome that they are talking about. I would like to think that on some level I've contributed towards that Thargoid tome because of the work that we all did during the, the time of the Kickstarter when uh, we all put together a writer's guide. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that some of the stuff from that that I did help put together has made it into this massive tome. I know some people are saying that it doesn't exist and it's a, f a figment of someone's imagination to get media time, but no, I can neither I confirm nor deny those statements at all. I'd, mm -hmm. I would be very surprised if Frontier did not have some kind of big reference book somewhere with all the stuff that they know about what happened in the, in the game. Yeah, before it makes after. sense. Um, and it, it's in Michael Brooks's possession as well, isn't it? Let's be honest. Mm, I would say it's in David Braben's possession, probably locked in his safe. Oh. And he and he releases that who? to people as and when they require this information who or need to know. Who gets the final? Who gets the final say? It is Braben then. I would say it's Braben, yeah. Because I, 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 I have been told stories of heated arguments, no, debates, sorry, heated debates, I'm putting that as nicely as I can, <laughs> um, between Michael Brooks and, and David Braben. Um, I have heard these the same story, stories. Yeah. Uh, in Elite. They are both incredibly passionate about it. That is one thing that has to be said from the outset, isn't it? They... they they obviously both care very deeply about the story and the lore within the Elite Galaxy. Oh, I agree. I agree. Completely agree. I mean, there's, there's, I may have some issues with Frontier's way of doing things sometimes, but they do not lack passion. That is one thing that they will never, ever lack. David Braben is fully committed to this game being amazing. It, it will be his vision of what he feels a game and a universe and a storytelling situation should be like. Michael Brooks as well is a is is an author, is a writer, is a creative person, and he has his own way of doing things as well. And I think when you get two big personalities like that coming together, you're going to get sparks. But I do yeah. hope. See, the thing is, I have seen a lot of positive things come out of Frontier's relationships with within their own team and what comes out of that department. But I've seen some negative stuff as well, and I, I do wonder sometimes if battles get won and lost. And we see the result of that come through. It's not always positive. It's not always what I would call right. But I'm one person with a subjective opinion. I'm not. I'm not the community as a whole. We just look at the no. sales figures and the, how many games are out there and how many people are playing it to say that they've done something right. Yes. One thing I will um, say, and I'm I'm going to say this very loudly because I've had so much criticism about the way the Thargoid arrival has panned out. Um, everyone saying, oh, it's only taken you three years to get him here. You telegraphed this two years ago with blah, 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 blah. And I say, well, yeah, that's a story. That's how you do a story. Real life in a story doesn't happen immediately. Things like this do happen over X amount of years. 
nothing yeah. is in nothing is an immediate hit. You get teasers, you get information, you don't know what's going on, and then over the course of years, months, weeks, whatever else, the story plays out. You're, so you're I think literally if... being told to preach in my chat right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you are singing to your crowd, man. Keep going. Testify. <laughs> well, it, it's it, true, it's storytelling, and there's one thing mm. I'm, I, I do kind of say that I am fairly good at storytelling because I've done it for a long time. I don't necessarily publish books, but I've written stories, I've written things, I've written lore, I've written things that hang things together, I've written background information for stuff, and I know what I like to read as well, and that's the biggest part of it, is that I know what I like to read. And mm. I like to read story that has characters, I like story that has plot, an engaging storyline, an engaging environment, and all that kind of stuff. And if you look in the right places in, in Elite Dangerous, it's there. It's all there. I disagree with the characterisation of the power play people. I think they are shallow and crap. And I think they need a hell of a lot of work before they even become even close to being believable. They're caricatures, both picture-wise mm. and personality-wise. Why and they do you need... think we're championing Harold? Well, I mean, they kind, of, they kind of... Yeah, they're kind of stereotypes, aren't they? Let's be fair. They're very much. Patriots so. very is much the most interesting to me. Yeah. Pa Patriots to me. Also, no, actually, as well as that, the guy who. Uh, Prav uh, Pravantel, that leads yeah. Utopia. He has yeah, he... so much potential to be such an interesting character. Um, it, uh, like, uh, you know, I am not a person who ever moans about Elite. I, <laughs> I like to remain positive. Yeah. Um, but I also always do say Elite is not perfect, there are things I would do differently, there are things I would change plain and simple um, one of them is that the, the whole way the power play characters are presented and the whole way that we interact with them um, I would yeah. reboot power play entirely personally um, I would scrap the power play concept completely keep the characters, I mean, but give the, give the characters to a writer to do something with I'd see. It. I wouldn't scrap power play because I okay. think personally I think the idea. I oh no, you see. I think personally the idea of having a turn-based strategy game uh, taking place within a real-time galaxy, which is essentially like power play is a grand level real-time strategy game. Yeah, that yeah. we we take part in. My problem with it is a that the characterization of the leaders is practically non-existent and then secondly alongside that you've got the problem where the 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 mechanics that they've used for power play don't work as well as you would want them to like i think this that's, is that's the blunt way of putting it this is what i'm getting at is that power play itself as a concept needs to be scrapped the rts idea having the kind of tactical situation in the galaxy is a good thing to have if it's done yeah. properly yeah. But I don't think it has been done properly. I think it's been done it's, very shallowly, it, if that's even a word. I, and I think the characters I, follow suit. I, I, from a from a mechanic standpoint, I actually think power play is a little bit more for your general your general player. Elite isn't an RTS game. It's not Stellaris. No. Um, I think the way it's laid out could be a lot more like it could be easier to understand what you're supposed to do and how to do it. I think it's not as clear as it can. I think if it was a little clearer and there was a little bit more, it was a bit more dynamic in how things sort of change and, and the way you see that change visually as well, like on the representation on like the, the galaxy map and stuff, it just, I don't know. Uh, I, I think it could could be do, done in a number of ways, I guess, but. I, 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 would, I would approach it from two, two point, if, if I were given controls of elite, essentially, um, power play, I would attack from two angles. The first side of it would be that I would change the mechanics entirely. Um, I would um, make it so that you can gain power play points from missions, so that you can gain mm. power play points from exploration. Essentially, I would open it up so that gaining power play points was a far easier and friendlier any, process. Any, anything you do for your major power. Basically, and, and then in a certain place. Yep. And then the second thing that uh, I would do is I would tie every minor faction into power play. So I would I would uh, have every minor faction either be independent or tied into a certain faction with power play. I think that would make it really really interesting. And then the final thing that I would do just to to really like finalise things would I would be to hire what? a full time writer. Who, whose job it would be to write the story 
that would emerge from all of that content taking place. Yep. Yes, that last part of it, fully on board. It needs a full-time writer. And I've said that since day one. The thing this yeah. game lacks is a person sitting there full-time writing a plotline to go through the entire game. They said they have a 10-year plan. They have a 10-year plan for development, but not for the story. They're playing that seat of the pants, and you can tell. That's why mm -hmm. it's so shallow. Yeah. Um, and... And I don't want this to turn into just a moaning session. I do want us to talk about the positive things as well. I really do. But well, to get I, back no, onto it, the it, actual story aspects of it, then go, go going yeah. away from the power play side of it, which we're kind of distracted on. Um, yeah, the storyline needs to be carried forward, and it will be. Um, yeah. But it needs to be meaningful. It needs to have meaningful characterization in it and meaningful plot lines. And if this is one of the things that I think Frontier can do, but they need to have the resource to do it is that they have a lot of ideas for the story. David Braben and Michael Brooks are creative individuals. They do have brains, they do have ideas that can run along with this stuff. All they need to do is put pen to paper and get it done. Or get people on board who can get the stuff out of their head into the game and let us play yeah. along a story, which is all we want to do. Yeah. Um, I think the stuff HCS voice packs are doing at the moment with the Storybook Galaxy is going to be mm. really interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh we, we actually had Paul on just before you arrived earlier. Um, he, he jumped in for a brief bit at the beginning of the stream. Um, and that was... That's moving forward. That's that's very close to release. And that is exciting. Um, and I think one of the things that is undeniably wonderful about Elite is that Frontier allow things like that to... to you know, there's never mm. been a hint of Frontier being displeased or upset with the idea of someone creating something like this. Uh, quite the opposite, in fact. They encourage them as much as they can, I think. Um, I think they could do more. Um, I think they could be more a more active, more proactive than reactive in trying to engage the community as storytellers and as creative content um, contributors. Funnily think... enough, Dan and I agree, and we're actually going to be approaching... Um, we're actually going to approach... Frontier, uh, like Zach, we've, I've already spoken to him briefly about this. Um, we, this is more from a streaming perspective from, from for us. Um, but we actually have some ideas that, that we're, we're going to talk to Frontier about. Um, about how we can, as streamers, do more for them and how, as a, a publisher, essentially, they can help us out more as well. Yeah? Um, I completely agree. It's something I've been shouting at them to do for years since the game came out in the first convention, is start engaging the writers. Start engaging the tools that you've got at your disposal and use us. Yeah. We said that in the start. We said that right at the very start when the books came out, was you've got four or five, to four or five, maybe ten, if you include the Golanx guys, talented professional writers out there who are now published. And you could have them on staff or freelance, because half of them are willing to do it freelance, creating content, story content for you again. And I, yeah. I honestly don't know why they haven't done it. And um, also, Sellism, can you go into tools in TeamSpeak for me very quickly? Oh, not again. And go into options. I'm really sorry. You need to put your... Are you on constant transmission at the minute? Probably, yeah. Could you put it onto voice activation? Would that be okay? Where am I looking for that? Uh, in capture. capture. Tools, options, capture. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where am I looking for that? Uh, in Continuous transmission. Yeah, if you click underneath it, it says voice activation detection. That's what I'm already on. Oh, you're on that. In that case, there's a little bar beneath that. You need to move the... If you click in it, it'll move the little arrows. You need to move it to the right a bit. Okay. Because your mic's just stuck open. Yeah, there's a lot of background noise in here today. I can't get around oh, no, it. No, I've got two yeah, fans no. on and the computer's running itself <laughs> to bollocks at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, ah, there you go. That's that's much better straight away. Um, so, and and there, the, I mean, from from my perspective, we we um, we're obviously working on this this huge story to do with Harold. Um, and I think this is one of those situations where. Frontier actually do this stuff better than than almost any other company in the industry. When I tell people who play, even other streamers who are big within and other communities in other games, when when I say to them that things that I have written have been you know put out in the Galnet in game, they find that astonishing. 
they, mm. they, they truly do, because that sort of thing just doesn't happen in the majority of games. And so it, it's one of those situations where Frontier already do a lot more, you would argue, than the vast majority of developers. Yeah. But we as a community are kind of sitting here going, but we can do more, we can do more. It's a, it's can, a yeah. lot of oh, it's a lot of work, considering most, like most games that have like a story or a, or a well written plot or a you know a campaign or something like that, is a one off, isn't it? Like if you have a game that has a campaign that it gets written, the script gets written, it's acted out, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you play it and that's it. It's a lot of lot of work, isn't it, for them to develop all the mechanics that they do, plus all the expansions, plus keep everything ticking over, plus. Plus, keep all this because it's not like they're writing uh, a single-player game that is being expanded. It's all this stuff from all these different parts of the galaxy, and all these different factions, and all these Galnet posts, and all this lore, and all this stuff that has to be all coinciding and all correct, and everything has to integrate with everything else. It's a lot of fucking work. It is a hell of like a lot it's of work. a real undertaking in terms of you know when you think of generic video game writing it's it's a huge kind of like huge kind of like task to yeah, try and do something is... amazing yeah, totally. oh ghost things elite is more than look this, this is something drew and i've discussed quite a lot what when he comes on that elite is more than a game it has become this multimedia experience and it, it, it it's quite obvious that, in some ways, Frontier, and I, I don't want this to sound nasty, in this, but I, 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 at this point I'm, I'm going to be slightly egotistical. Uh, if you compare it to, to, to me with the, the Inquisition and then the Sovereignty, I have no, what I'm do no idea what I'm doing. I have never been in a community, let alone wrong one, before. Yeah? No idea whatsoever. And Frontier are in the same situation. They've never made an MMO. And they've never had. There's no guard to creating what they're trying to do. And there are missteps occasionally. Um, but oh god, it. I would rather that they try and that we get what we've got than they did. Um, just did something safer and more ordinary. And yeah, I, I I'm glad that Elite isn't a World of Warcraft clone. It isn't an Eve Online clone that they have gone their own way, that at every decision they are making their own decisions. I, I find that um, heartening. You could say they're blazing their own trail. Yeah. Good on Tish. Well done. <laughs> um, um, I totally agree. I mean, they've, they've, gone, they've gone the direction they wanted to go. They've taken, they've taken a big risk. And obviously they've done it on Kickstarter money and Kickstarter funding and Kickstarter publicity and all that kind of stuff. And made a really good job of it. And I think it's a damn good game. Don't get me wrong, I may have my criticisms about it, but I love the game. I could jump into this game anytime, and I absolutely love the visuals, I love the mechanic, I love the the way that you can jump between systems, I love the suns, the planets, everything is rendered beautifully. The gameplay, in general, is fairly good. Um, I find it engaging, and if I get bored doing one thing, I'll go and do something else. I won't sit and bitch and moan about it on a forum. I'll go and do another part of the game that I like. If, yeah. I get bored, if I get bored doing pew pew, I'll go and explore. If I get bored yeah. doing that, I'll go and do a bit of trading. If I get bored, I'll play. There's, I think and if I get bored of all that, I'll go and play Fallout. There's, there's. I was going to say this. I think there's few games that exist that the people that even moan about the game have put in as many hours. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people play a game for like 50 hours or something, moan about it, and then not play it again. The people that moan about it are still people that have got thousands of hours in the game. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Which tells you a big story. Playing it more and more. <laughs> and and yeah, the, to be honest with you, we we are incredibly fortunate. Um, we're, we're very fortunate that that we we exist in a world where something like elite is even possible. Um, yeah. And yes, sometimes we complain quite loudly about things and and that sort of thing because I guess because of how much we do love this game. You know, um, um, yeah. I I think uh, I think rather than rather than complain and be negative about things, we always need to try and help Frontier. To be honest with you, to to try and learn with them, 
and, and move on on this because it is a journey essentially was, that we're all on together. Yeah, it was said earlier that um, Frontier have kind of pioneered the kind of engagement with the community, um, and they're better at it than any other company out there. I I, I tend to agree with that, but I, I do think they need to be more proactive with it. Like I said, I think they need to take people's suggestions on board and say, well. Rather than let's not dismiss it out of hand or just ignore it or say soon or we'll get back to you, which is what they seem to have a bit of a reputation for doing now, is actually just say, right, okay, let's talk about this, let's see if we can push it forward. Um, they kind of, they seem to jump at an idea and then kind of dissolve into the background with it, which is quite sad. And um, again, this is, this is one of those situations where Frontier are doing arguably, you, you know, it's quite easy to argue that they, they are doing this better than, than almost any other developer, and yet we want more. Um, yeah, we do want more. I think it's, it's, the, it's the consistency. You sometimes yeah. get this, this this impression that they get a big surge to do, a set, to do certain things in a certain way, and then that dies off, and then it takes us to poke them again, to remind them that they are meant to be engaged with the community. I mean, take the whole thing with the community websites. They refuse to engage people doing the community websites, and then the community websites were taken down as a protest and Frontier fessed up and said yep, fair enough, alright, we dropped the bollock on it let's get it sorted. And that's fine because they do make that realisation in the end and they can then re-engage and get going with that. That's what mm -hmm. I mean about consistency if they can get that consistency right and carry and keep the momentum going on these things, then I think they could achieve amazing things Yeah Um we want more because uh, Unity in my chat just said we want more because uh, uh, they are doing so much good and this game has so much more potential. And it that's, does. That's true. It does. Yep. I, I've always said this game. Um, this game is always a framework. It's always going to get built upon for the next X amount of years. It will get better and better and better. And we may not like something that comes out in a particular update, but then just wait to the next update. You might find something you like in that. In the meantime, just yeah. play the bits you want to play. Or Why play be salty else about it? Or play something or, else. Or, shock horror, play something else for a while. It is possible to walk away from a game for a little while and then come back to it. <laughs> like, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what I, I, I have to do it with Elite. I, I haven't got, I you know, I and when I started streaming, I was playing this game 15 hours a fucking day. Yeah. Every day. You know, super, super, like, just hooked in, addicted, couldn't, you know, I played one other game once in a you know, ten days or once a fortnight or something, um, and then you know, on and off, I've gone through phases of of interest and excitement and stuff with the game because it's just how it goes. Yeah, you know, so. the most still the most excited. We were talking uh, a while back, weren't we, about what people's most exciting thing of season two was or has been. Yeah, like what's your favourite part of season two? Mine is still two point oh beta. Still, my fav my most yeah. favourite bit of the entire year's that, releases uh, is Planetary Landings. Yeah, 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 Planetary yeah. Landings for me is still the most brilliant thing that happened in the whole of season two. Because <laughs> just, just cruising across the planet surfaces, landing, taking the SLVs down into those like, you know, we found I remember we found planets that had like a four or five mile, you know, chasm. Like yeah, 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 yeah. And we went to, we went night, and watched that binary sunset thing, the you know, first night yeah. we flew out and watched that binary sunset. And, and, yeah. yeah. That no, stuff I, was incredible, yep, um, it was. and that really made and me it excited. Still is. Yeah, it, it, it still is. takes my but breath that, away. It's this funny game because still does that. it's funny because that stuff is the stuff that gives you no advancement in the game and has What's nothing tied to yep. any anything at all, other than I'm just enjoying being on a planet exploring the, the 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 mountains and things like that. And oh, just, you know, wow! You're not playing that. the game; you're experiencing it. Yeah. basically. Yeah, Hang you, on, you, so you're ignoring that's how it should be done. Can I can I just butt in very briefly? We, yeah. we we have we have a celebrity watching us. We do everybody <laughs> via Chromecast on the sofa. So, so yeah. I don't think she, she's able to say anything. But I wouldn't normally call out a lurker or anything. But she has just tweeted out that she's watching via Chromecast on the sofa. So um, Kate Russell is, is actually Kate. watching us at the minute. Yay. Hello, Kate. Hi, Kate. How are you doing? <laughs> That's utterly awesome. Um, and and it, it, it like there is so much to do with this game, and and yeah, like people have said, they, they every now and then you take away a, a little step away. You you you, you even I do it sometimes. You know, 
my channel is entirely built around Elite Dangerous. And still, from time to time, I will take the little step away and play something else for a week or two. Um, because every now and then you do need that sort of... That, 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 that change to something else. Um, but, the amount of us that come back to this game, over and over and over, even if you do go away and play something else for a month, three months, six months, whatever, the amount of people who come back to this game... Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. That, that shows what this game is. Um, I, I, I'm like, you know, I'm probably gonna not be playing much of Elite until I would imagine some way into 2.4 now. Yeah. Um, because I'm just not, you know, there's nothing going on at the moment that I really want to get involved in. I'm not, I've gone past the point where I'm obsessed with like trying to grind money or grind rank or anything like that. I don't give a shit about that anymore. Yeah. Um, so really all it is down to now is just things to do. Yeah. Um, and you know, the for whatever reason, the the artifacts and the because I didn't do any of that stuff. I didn't do any of the ancient ruins. Didn't do You've any of never the, particularly not, been into not the really story, have in, you? Well, it's not just the story. It's that those bits. You know, I watch people do them on streams, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But there's not much for me to do there, apart from go and have a look. Or you know, there was a scan. You know, the mission for the ruins where you scan this, 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 and you make some cash. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know whatever not really interested in the cash if i want uh, it i'll go exploring or something no again um, for me the payout of that was the law not the money I didn't, yeah i didn't care about the but money. it was it was the law see, that's yeah so that's kind of stuff that i know is going on and i know i'm caught up with what's happening because i can get it from you guys and yeah. i can hear it i can just come and sit in here once a week and catch up on everything that's happening in the game without even playing it so <laughs> um that catches me up i don't have to go and find all that stuff and I haven't really got the interest at the moment for the, that stuff I will be interested once we can interact with the aliens I think that will be the next bit now. you can yeah, call, you can call them okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah so once they're actually <laughs> about and we've got some active new mechanic or new uh, you know purpose to go out and fight them whether that's you know to try and save systems that are being shut down or to try and stop, you know, stations from being blown up or whatever. Yeah, so that's that's when I'm more yeah, yeah that's be what that'll be when I jump back in again when there's something else to to get on with, you know. because um, I'm kind of as much as I love the mechanics of the game, I'm kind of I'm out exploring still at the moment, but I'm done with mining the combat. I don't just doing it for the sake of doing it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just bounty hunting for the sake of let's go bounty hunting. If it's yeah. if it's let's go here because there's a fucking Fargoid fleet that's come in and they're threatening these empire controlled systems here. Cool, yeah. that's an actual purpose. That's brilliant. Well, you know, we can make a difference in the overall, you know, story of the game or the overall, you know, events and stuff. That's wicked. Um, but that's, I think that's and why I wasn't really too interested in a lot of the Thargoid stuff because it was very scripted, quick timey stuff. It didn't, you couldn't make any impact on it. What you were doing at the moment doesn't really change anything. Do you know what I mean? It's more of a show and tell. So, I guess yeah. that's that's why I wasn't really, yeah. I guess that's my reason. It, it's for, all set you know. up at the moment. Yeah, it? exactly. It's more yeah. come and have a look at the cool stuff, and then eventually it'll all have a actual yeah. purpose that that is part of the mechanics, I guess. So, okay then. The the, the, the question that I like, and and I don't I don't know if we you and I need to like if it's all right then after the stream tonight. Oh wow, hang on. <laughs> Sorry, subscription. Thank you so much, Violin Cozy. A ten dollar sub! Thank you so much! Super well, resub, but super super appreciate it. Who's um, a good doggy so day? Much. Thank you so much, really, really appreciate it. I genuinely do. Um I, I Words always fail me with this. I thank you. Just, just thank you. Um, it's always a good thing people sub into you, Graham, because it shuts you up for a bit. Tell me about it. <laughs> it, it, actually, it actually makes me shut up. It's, it's astonishing. Um, Let's try and make him cry again, guys. 
Oh no, no, don't. They do that often enough. Everyone, and sub and donate. Everyone, everyone right now, um, sub and donate. Make him cry. No, no, I'm fragile enough as it fucking is. Gemma's not here. Come on. <laughs> um. <laughs> bad enough already. Uh, Karumba asked but, a question before all that. He did, yes, and it's a very good it? question. I was, I was about, I was so about I was to pass thinking. it on, funnily. Don't, don't worry, I was, I, I was, I hadn't forgotten. <laughs> and I am reading every. I know tonight we're not responding to chat as much as we normally would. I am reading everything still. Don't, don't worry. Um, and and uh, Karumba did ask a really good question to Sellerson. Uh, what's your best guess at the direction Frontier is taking with the power words? I assume you mean hostile or um, not, and that sort of thing. So I'll now pass this over to you. So what's my opinion on what way they're going to go with it? Yeah. Interesting, because that's asking me to get inside the head of Mr. Braven himself. Am I qualified to do that? Kay, um... thank you so much. <laughs> Kay did the bits. Um... I would love to see them, and I've said this before, it's not going to be any surprise me, I'd love to see them kick our ass out of the bubble. I'd love to see that. I would love to see them kick our ass out of the bubble, make us create a new colony out of where Colonia is, and populate that. Because I think that will be the best inroad towards doing the atmospheric landings that they say they're not going to do. Um, so when, when I still had hope that this was going to happen, that was what I kind of hoped they would try and do, so that rather than having to populate all these big fancy worlds with the great big just, populations just and handful. megacities... Um, it would yeah. just be no basic. planets with any civilizations. Yeah. You could just land, create a house, and then work it from there. So all of your cities would be player created content at that point. That's, and then you uh, can then filter that back out into the bubble and bring that's it back. Interesting. So yeah. you, you be, that's interesting. So that's an in game law excuse for giving them another year or so to create all the decent shit back in, back in the bubble. Exactly. <laughs> it's ready. Oh. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Just give us a little bit longer, a little bit longer. We haven't quite done London yet. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Cozy, thank you for the bits. <laughs> uh, apparently, Operation Break DJ is in effect. They haven't <laughs> said. You. They haven't said they're not doing atmospheric landings. They've said that atmospheric landings is still. It's, not even, is it? it's a long it's way away. Still a is, while is what they've off. said. I. Yeah. I don't no, expect yeah, it any time soon was the quote. Yeah. And yeah. and that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. I don't think um atmospheric landings are a priority at this point. Um and no, no. to be honest with you, I'm happy that they're not. It, if you actually really think about it in a massive way, there's not actually a lot that they would bring to the mechanics of the game at this point. You'd need, a reason, you'd need, a, you'd need no. a reason to... I mean, you'd need a reason other than, oh, this is pretty. Look at the trees and the things. You'd need you'd need a reason to be on them, like, that has some some point but to it. But that's know? the problem, is we've just finished a conversation saying that a lot of people are playing this game because it's pretty. Because if they're not yeah. enjoying a lot of the yeah, actual in-game content, yeah. they're yeah. playing it because it's pretty. Prettiness. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah, true. Um, I... Uh... I mean, they could. I mean, there's. They, we know that they could do, you know, No Man's Sky style procedural stuff. But it's the it's the 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 colonization stuff that would be very the very part, yeah. difficult. All those yeah. Earth-like planets that everyone, you know, that we've all flown past, where you can see all the lights on the dark side lit up, and there's obviously billions of people on the surface, and there must be huge cities and Coruscant style fucking, you know with ships flying and, and skyscrapers and buildings and shops and you know all well, that it's stuff. It's making it realistic isn't it? It's making it a, yeah. realis a realistic portrayal yeah. of the On a planetary scale life. which is scale. massive. Yeah. One um, one thing that I've always said that the day that we get atmospheric landings the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to find the first planet I can find and dive straight into a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no doubt that it's going to happen. Yeah. The tech, we've got the, like, there's no, there isn't a case, it isn't a case of we can't do it, we don't have the tech to do it, we don't have the engine to support it, Does. Yeah. We've got, we've got the software and the hardware to do that shit now. Well, um, I, I would disagree. I think if, if, you're, if you're looking at planetary scale, billions of settlements and billions of people mm -hmm. living on it, I think the hardware might struggle with that. I, yeah, no, that's I don't know. Well, well, no, well, to have those cities be anything other than well, essentially a gift. 
but then it but no but, but it's the way that it's it's the way that it's programmed it's stuff to do with like draw distance level of detail fogging something like that loading everything that you know just because yeah, you've got procedurally generating a city and then having that city look at all believable especially if you're able to move around it in any I way. mean to be well you there's clever ways you can get around with that around that though there's clever ways you can get around that think of think of um, you know when we were in New York yeah like unless you were up high somewhere or looking straight down one of the block roads yeah how far was your line of sight yeah far oh. Like, like, I, I like, know what you mean. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, There's I, ways I of thinking that they can bring in. Like, yeah. if you land in a big city, you're not going to see past, like, three or four blocks unless you're, you know, and it's... There's, they're game developers. They, you know, they're paid to think these things out and um, figure out how to do this shit in the best way that will be optimised and will run on, you know, the hardware that's around. Yeah. So, I'll, yeah. Like, you know, I've always said I'll be really interested to see how they handle it. And um, which is why they're saying it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but it's it's you know it's totally. Um... No Conan Conan library. Oh God. No. 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 Who the said wave, that? The, the, Where the nobody... hell did that come from? Yeah. No. That's not what we're saying at all. And no. That's not not true. at all. Doesn't um, it's... Frontier have done superbly with their console development, um, and it hasn't detracted from the development of the PC game. Uh, no, it's sorry. How? I'd, I'd it's have to say, five bits. I'd have to, I'd have to say that the console development has actually made the game run more efficient. Yes. I However, would they, they having to tweak it. Yeah. I, I Optimization has gone through the roof. I'm amazed I can play this game on what I've got. To be honest. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if much later iterations of the game that have season three, season four, etc., may be restricted to say the Xbox One X or the PlayStation Pro. Possibly. I, I don't. Oh, yeah, Make it boosted up at some point. I, uh, yeah, no, at some right. point, uh, at some point, that will probably have to happen. Yeah, but I because will be of, because of hardware. If it's as early as season four, I'll no. be honest. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. Uh, but then no, they're moving away from the season model, so we're, we're going to have to wait yeah. and see how they're going to yeah, yeah. going to move things. Yeah. Uh, move, move things. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, speed humanity. I I am much more than aware. Hokey, what is going on is this evening we have been graced with the presence of the absolutely wonderful Sellerson. Um And again, Sellerson, I do want to thank you for, for coming on and, and multicasting just like this. This is... Um, it, it's so nice to get to chat with you like this and, and pick your oh, brain about you. stuff. And It's always a pleasure well, being here because you always say nice things about me. Well, not being funny, and, and at this point we're, we're going to move on to talking about your awesome thing. Um, I beg enough. your pardon? <laughs> your awesome thing. <laughs> Giggity. Um, no. If... Oh, wow. TGM. Break him. Break him, TGM. Break him. I... I... And, it, yeah, no, it's five bits that the, the voice triggers at um, because we had someone spam single bits with, with chat. Didn't we? Crazy. Um, yeah, I wonder who that was. Crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, um, the mad dog. I don't think I thank you and and, and Posey as well again and Kate and TGM and everyone. Thank you. Um, now, uh, you Sellerson. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone, hasn't he? No, Kate, Kate, uh, Kate is making the text to speech voice. I'm not bad to text to speech voice. I should be RuPaul my ND Frank. <laughs> oh dear, and Violet and Cozy, thank you as well. Um, so you're developing, or have, in fact, no, not developing. You are finalising the Elite Dangerous RPG, pen and paper no. RPG. No. No. no, 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 no. Not Elite Dangerous? It is Dangerous? not the Elite Dangerous RPG, that is a different product. Okay, so what is the full correct title? Because I've always said the Elite Dangerous RPG and then Elite Encounters, but no. Elite Encounters is the name of my RPG. Right, so you don't... Because I, the reason I say Elite Dangerous is associating it with Elite Dangerous rather than yeah. This is yeah, this is a yeah. bit of a problem because we now have yeah. the Elite Dangerous RPG as an official product. I have yeah, always yeah, yeah, I have yeah. always targeted the marketing for my game as the the Elite 
as uh, sorry, role playing in the elite universe. Yeah. That has always been my tagline. Um, in order to make sure that it did have its own identity if another RPG came along, which it has. So now yeah. it need, there needs to be that distinction there. No. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Apologies. Okay. No, no, don't at all. It's it's better to know, but. The important thing is that you've now submitted, I believe, another draft, yes. have you not? I've submitted the second draft, yeah. And obviously there's still things to be done with Frontier and all of that sort of jazz. Um, but the important thing is we're getting into the home straight plain and simple, oh, yeah. aren't we? Big time. I would hope so. And, yeah. and this is exciting. Um, oh god, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, is he doing the pie macro? <laughs> Was, was, that that wrong, was that the wrong macro again, noob? He's done he this like in the past. Um, he like pie. Thank you, noob. Uh, I, English. I can, do I need, I can do I need to send you the fucking song so you can set it up? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, um... Well, Hokey. Hokey's Hoke, getting three bits from adverts. <laughs> I hope we can do that soon. I, I want to farm some frickin' bits. Yep. Uh, um, so, right, uh... No. Uh, am I allowed to, to, to sort of mention the, the thing that we were talking about earlier, fellas? The, the thing to do with the, the stream and stuff. Am I allowed to talk about that? Um, I can't remember what, was, what specific thing you mean. I'll poke you, because I don't want to oh, say this okay. out loud. Um, He's going to poke a bit magnificent thing, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, wake up. Oh, I, the, you can tell my caps lock was on, can't you? Cool. Didn't mean to shout at you, Captain Caps Lock. I apologise. I apologise. Oh, yeah. Is, is, um, is it... Yeah, that's fine. I mean, the, yeah, that's fine. You can mention that. I will clarify yeah. anything else that you miss off from it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no. Right, so... Super excitingly, at some point in the nearest future, Bellazen is going to get some rules to us, and we are going to be doing some streams of elite encounters. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, Dan, cool. you, know, you know I mentioned serendipity? Yeah, 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 yeah. Things suddenly going click, we, click, 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 click. Because we've just started, I've just been getting into roleplay and stuff in a fairly big way, and we just launched a new uh, a d and d channel yesterday. Um, yeah, I, which I was, was talking uh, to sell us which about was, this earlier. Which was <laughs> highly successful uh, for our first ever stream. So, yeah, I, that's, that sounds like great fun. Uh, isn't that a moment of serendipity, Dan? Yeah. Yeah, like sometimes Brilliant. things really do just happen at the right time, don't I? This yeah. is what I wanted to do. You know, earlier when I was sort of going. Yeah. I, really I mean, shit. That's thing, something but... that that's something that like we could do on yes. that channel as well. Yes, like that's, it is that's totally. What I was going to suggest. As, you know, we don't want to stray too far from role play. Do you, like, no, you, but you know, it tabletop. Is... As long as it's tabletop and dice and you know, etc. Which, et cetera, which it is. Yeah. Perfect. Which, which it is. Yep. Um, Drew is in my chat. He's fine. Drew. Mega. Hello, Drew. Hello, Drew. Drew. We've got Drew on tomorrow. We're, we're quite excited about this. I'll Drew's beat you to it. Along and, and, and <laughs> chat with us. I know. Well, you're, you, you know, this makes sense. You are higher in the the, 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 the pantheon of law nerds than me, so this is know, it only makes sense. Um, I I am but the apprentice. You two are the masters. Let's be honest. Um, th this is this is only the truth. Uh, <laughs> And, and and sorry about the click clack, typey typey. Would would you believe that I bought this keyboard because it was advertised as being quiet? Like, I I kid no, you not. I wouldn't believe that at no. all. Really, I have got sitting in front of me a Corsair K55. If you go and look at the K55, it is sold as being quiet. You have to um you have to learn to see. I I've learned to type accurately, fast, and with less. Um, with less pressure on my mechanical Corsair. So this isn't if mechanical, I type... though. Isn't it? No, oh, this is, it like is a membrane, membrane keyboard. Really? Yep. 
Fucking hell, okay. That's loaded on a membrane keyboard, mate. That's broken. Yeah, tell me about crazy. it. No, 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 tell me about it. A membrane keyboard that sounds like a mechanical keyboard. <laughs> yes, don't. Trying too I hard. The future's keyboard. here. <laughs> I bought a membrane keyboard because I didn't want a mechanical keyboard. Yeah. Yeah? Because I don't like them because of the amount of noise they make. The mechanical keyboard might end up being quieter. Don't. Oh, <laughs> vile and cozy. Thank you. Um, Break him. I, I, <laughs> um, but no, we we so um so yes, that is super. The, the, I said there was going to be an announcement. There you go. We are going to be doing some streams of elite encounters. How they will go out, we haven't finalised yet or anything like that. We will be finalising that. Um, <laughs> but we we get to we get to. Ah, oh, yeah. We get to stream Elite Encounters. The full story of it is that I am I'm negotiating my frontier at the minute to see if I can bring out a quick a quick start guide to the game. With just a kind of overview of what the rules are without any of the lower background and anything like that. So you can use the system and the character sheets and the the combat stuff and the character generation and all that stuff and just play the game. Um, if I can do that, I'll obviously be doing it to my pledgers first, because they are my first priority. But at the same time as I do, as I give that to them, I'll give it to you as well. And if I can go any further than that, then I shall do. Because obviously marketing is all good, as far as I'm concerned. And you guys are probably the people who have been most vocal about this game um, since I started writing it. So yeah, you you, you deserve the the chance to look at it and criticise it if you can. Um, I'd love to give it. A, love to give it a go. And of course we've been vocal about it, Sanderson. That's what we do. Somebody Indeed. awesome in the elite community is doing something awesome. Everyone should know about it. It's <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's definitely no better way to get a critique on something like that than to have a bunch of streamers play it in front of an audience of people. Indeed, that's exactly the, that's, exactly the best gonna, idea there is. Yeah, you're going to get no better uh, overall feel of what people think. Yeah, it's all going to backfire horribly if you all sit there and go, Jesus, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Four um, years of this crap, and he comes out with this pile of wank. <laughs> Holy crap! Wow, that's a, that sounds like something someone might write on Elite Dangerous forum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah, the, this this uh, this is super exciting, and and the moment that this comes out, I will obviously be screaming at you all, going, "You can buy this now! You can buy this now! For God's sake, pop!" Because but use my affiliate link so I can. <laughs> I don't have. I don't have an affiliate link. No. For, why not? For, for, for no. For for. Uh, well, it will depend, I suppose, on where sellers and chooses to, to well, sell it. I think it's going out through Fantastic no. Books. Is it? No. 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 no? no. Yeah. Or is it going out through Frontier? It's going oh. out through me. So you don't. You don't have an affiliate link to me yet. There it is. Um, and D Mad Dog, thank you for the bits again. Um, D10 or asked... D20, Karumba? Yeah. Jesus, really? D6, the only dice there are. What? That's, that's yeah. right, D6. You mean the, you can play it with normal dice? Regular dice. Yeah. If you, you don't have to go out and buy any dice. If you've got a copy of Monopoly, you can play my game. If dun, you've got a dun, poker dun. set, you can play my game. If you've got a crap it actually, set. Uh, it actually translates directly onto the Monopoly board, is what he's saying. All you need to do is just <laughs> modify the rules slightly. Uh, mark a pen. All you got to do is write the names over the, you know, cross out Pentonville and write in, you know, life. Um, how did we? I love the fact that we both said that at the same fucking time. First one that came to mind. When I was much, much younger, I did actually take one of my old Monopoly boards and turn it into an elite Monopoly board. <laughs> oh, that's go, awesome. Go to, go to Hutton. Go directly to Hutton. Do not pass. Do not pass. It. Do not refuel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> free docking. So, so look, um, obviously, I I will keep you guys up to date as much as as, as I can, and, and when sellers and knows more, he'll let me know and all that sort of thing. Um, but this is our chance to sort of start building hype for this, um, and I do want to do that because i have wanted to do this since the day i found out about sellers rpg when i found out about elite encounters i have wanted to stream it um my my story like my my, my the, the 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 thing that i love most about elite is story and i love storytelling i love trying to create stories for people to take part in 
Um. <laughs> apparently, the, apparently the elite encounters sales team are called and you're fired so listen <laughs> but but to me creating a story that other people can can take part in and enjoy hopefully um, is something I adore and the idea of being able to do that with, with something like elite encounters is just so exciting for me and again I've not really got any experience with with um, sort of pen and paper role playing stuff, um, but I, I don't care. Great, I'm just going to chuck great, myself great in. Yeah, just chuck myself in at the day. It's pen. awesome. I I um, actually find that it's more. In, I I think I would actually go so far as to say that doing pen and paper stuff like whatever you know D and D, Blades in the Dark, whatever space you know space whatever type of you know pen and paper board game, whatever you play. I would argue that it actually is more immersive, <laughs> that lovely word, um, mm -hmm. and at least as enjoyable, if not sometimes more enjoyable than, than playing you know, a video game of the same kind of set in the genre, because you are enjoyable. using your brain to put yourself wherever you want to be, and it's, yeah, it's great fun. Great, great fun. If you've got a good games master, then yes. Pen, yes. And, pen, pen and paper RPGs are amazing. Yep. It's like being part of yep. a film or part of a TV series or it, part of something that's yeah quite special sometimes because you, you you do get that kind of individual it, character moment and if your GM's you, a good one you will make he will make sure you get your character moment and well, that can it, be it some just, of the best it, times of your life. It frees it. It's like it's it's playing a video game that hasn't been confined to you know with no linearity. Yeah, you can do what you want. You know, so, within within reason. As long as you've got an imagination to imagine the visuals, because yep. you're not going to get really pretty visuals. Exercise your imagination, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> Engage so, imagination drive. Apparently, I'm a complete asshole of a dungeon master. I, as, so I've been told. Despite the fact that I've never pay, played pen and paper role playing game, the games, I'm I'm an asshole of a dungeon master. <laughs> I can imagine you would be actually. Yeah, you'd kill everybody uh, in the first session. Um, <laughs> no. No, I'm. So, so the only the, the, the closest I've done to pen and paper role playing game is a story I created for the stream, and I need to do the the second one. I have got it pretty much ready after my rewrite. Uh, Frontier have made me rewrite my entire second generation ship story because the central arc for it uh, they stole and used before I I used it. Um, the others, they had the decency to just steal from my last campaign, and, and they, they just used those. Um, but this one, no, they had to use the idea that was the central narrative of of what <laughs> I was going to do. For the, for the greater good. Uh, yeah. can, I, can I just point out at this point, I've got Drew Wigger in my chat talking about Elite Counter Session, and I've got Kate Click in your chat telling them about the same session, yep. but totally independent of each other. It's great. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, but, Drew says, the first time I played Elite Encounters, Kate Russell and I got drunk and tried to outgirl each other, and Dan <laughs> Grubbs turned a random NPC's innards into a bicycle. Wow. Yeah. And Kate Click says, Dave, brilliant. tell them what Dan Grubb created last time we played, which Drew just did. Hey, it's great. <laughs> Parity is marvellous. That's awesome. That I've was an amazing it. session, actually. That was just madness. That was the second Fantasticon, I believe. Oh, no, it was the first Fantasticon. The first Fantasticon. Um, yeah, three o'clock in the morning drinking session. And then we all got then we all got the elite encounters right. And Dark and Dragon, yes, that's the closest I've done to sort of pen and paper role playing game. Um, and the story I created was basically like one of those choose your own adventures. Mm -hmm -hmm. And and the the ridiculous thing about it is is the the stories that Frontier have chosen for their generation ships are almost lifted. In some case in some cases it's just the theme. In other cases it is almost word for word lifted from what we did. Um, quote 38 in my channel from April of last year is for the greater good uh, which is of course the literal tagline of one of the generation ships that they've got um, th that was that was a bit weird but um, no I, I didn't kill everyone in the first session <laughs> I basically what I did is I set the story up at first where I, I wanted to see... I, I was basically playing sociological experiments with them, and I wanted to see if given a situation where 
doing something horrific would probably be in their you know for the, for their circumstances the best course whether they would do that um and i basically for the first few sessions made worse and worse things for them to do to to sort of survive and they kept doing it they kept being willing to make this huge sacrifice to to survive and whatnot and so I ended up writing part of the story so that if they chose that, that route and they kept doing these horrific things, that it would come back and bite them in the arse. And it did. Mm. And they ended up on a, a where the people on board the generation ship were being controlled by a malevolent AI who'd reduced them to a caveman-style civilization who, mm. who were carrying out mystical rituals that were actually the maintenance on board the ship. Um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Um... And yeah, the, the the idea of having a bit more structure and stuff like that uh, really does excite me. Um, I was going to say bye to Drew because he's just popping off now. So, thanks, Drew. We'll Take see care. you soon, Drew. See you tomorrow. <laughs> we will see you soon. Have a lovely evening, and we will speak to you tomorrow. Yeah. How very excited! What a start to the week. Um, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and so the process to create Elite Encounters has been uh, a little bit long and arduous. Hang on, just let me look up the word process. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Conan, I would say it sounds like I did quite quite well as a GM. Yeah, I I, I think so. I think that's I'd... me he's talking to. Sorry, yeah, that's it. Just a blatant plug for the D and D channel in the chat there. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, what's been the most enjoyable part of creating an RPG? Finishing it. <laughs> Stopping writing the fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> what? Because um, you're going to get it out into the hands of people now. Oh wow, well, that's a oh, quote. I will be honest. That's um, it is something I'm looking forward to when it's actually finished and out and on a shelf somewhere. The first photograph I get of someone's bookshelf with my book on it is going to be the day I actually break down and cry. <laughs> I, the, the, wow, was, Dan, thanks. What has been the you best time? Said, you the best you time. just said, gonna, literally, your words, gonna get, gonna get it out into the hands of people. I'm sorry. Can't, <laughs> that can't go unchecked. It's just, sorry, go on. <sighs> <laughs> sorry, oh, you guys. One minute you're up there, the next minute you're right back down again. Yep, absolutely. Um, uh, so, what was the question again? About so, so, get yeah. You say getting it out there, and and you know, once you see a photo of it on someone's bookshelf, that's that's going to be one hell of a moment for you, isn't it? That's going to be the best point. That's going to that's going to be the point where the entirety of the last four years of work is going to actually meant something. Yeah. Um, I suppose up till up till now, I suppose the best part has been <laughs> I got asked the same question by um, Anthony Olver for his Elite Archives book because he's, he's doing, he's, he's, his book's going to have little features from each author and he asked me the same question and I kind of did a top three and one of the it's always going to be one of the top moments in my life is the, the last hour of the Kickstarter for the Elite Encounters funding was an amazing and adrenaline fueled rush of everything so many different emotions went through me on that day it's unreal um, but I think probably my favourite part of it is when I actually sit back and watch people playing it or when I'm, if I'm jamming a session at a convention and I sit back and I watch everyone else playing their parts in character to me that's amazing because that, that is them in in a sense, it's obviously it's, it's elite but in a sense that's them in my universe being characters and being people that they've invented and that's amazing. As, as a GM mm. and as a writer, that is an amazing feeling. Yeah, I. To be honest, that's why I love this hobby. Yeah, yeah might we? I have you spoken? Have you told Sellerson or spoken to him about the the uh, the Elite RP Discord and the yet. group and stuff? Oh, okay. I, I got. To, I, I, okay. Sellerson <laughs> and I had a very <laughs> brief wanna... chat. Before stream you might, earlier, might, when um, we get that yeah. kind of going a little bit more, you might be interested in possibly doing a few bits and pieces over on that side of things because yeah, we've definitely. got. If I can free up some a, time, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> we've got. We, we're probably going to be in need of some 
community like some imposed content as it were to get people kind of going a little you know yeah um there's already been like we've already had people i know i've heard that we've already had people out just kind of doing a little bit of rp together which is great um but yeah it needs a little bit more i i I, you and I need I to sit don't, and chat and work I, out how we, we utilize need, the we need to get a, server for this. And, and we need to get a few more people. We need to figure out which, like, we need to kind of delegate a bit of workload between a few of yeah. us to, and schedule stuff because I haven't got the time to be always in there trying to drum up. You know, it's, it's yeah. it was a good idea, but it's it definitely <laughs> is a group. It it needs it needs lots of people kind of like. Yeah, I've had doing the same issue bit. with the GBC. I've yeah, had to put it on the back burner because can't. it was just too much it's, for me. Yeah, this I time. just want to point out that Pale Gringo has been a bastard. <laughs> Gets it out in hand. <laughs> yeah, no, I brilliant. I've... I mean, you know, if you want to succeed in any kind of media media uh, outlet, I I guess getting it out into the hands of people is the way to get ahead or to get ahead uh, i mean either, either way um yeah, you just, just got to get it out there got to get it out there that's how you get get ahead in uh you got to get it in there as well in content I creation can words and english that's you know. that's that's all i'm gonna say i yeah. i can words and english <laughs> i can um, spoke proper england yeah yep, hashtag, hashtag low hashtag low clop everyone <laughs> all i can say um, I was going to say, I mean, if, obviously, if, <laughs> yes, I think we should take the conversation about like content, role playing content, and so on, sort of off off channel for a bit, and then discuss that at some point later on. Because I'm definitely interested, and if I can get an idea of what it is you're looking for or how I can help, then yeah, I'm more than happy to be involved with something like that. If you want me to GM games or write Ooh, scenarios this, this, or whatever yeah. you want me to do, I'm quite happy to pop on. There's, well, there's I, I a, I'm an attention yeah. hold. You should know that by now. It's, there's what there's a whole out of character there's a whole in character section of the Discord where basically if you want to write something in the comms chat or in, on the billboard or whatever you're in character while you're doing it so mm. it is yeah, a I've, place I've seen this kind of in, thing before out of game as well for people to you know just have a bit of fun with you know their their, their role play or whatever. However, this is where we can perhaps organise a meeting for say people like Sellers and and Drew. Uh, people like Paul Watson um, and a couple of others and um, we might be able to integrate the RP server with the storybook thing that's coming out. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, that that might be a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. Like this I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, Sellerson. Yes. There's something else I want to talk to you about. About six inches, about an inch and a half girth. Um, the size I, of a standard UK sausage? No, it's my joystick. <laughs> like, oh, only an um, inch, really? Mine's much thicker than that. I don't need a big one. So, so, the 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 question I have for you: How old do Val? Um, do you support his claim for the throne? I can neither deny nor confirm that statement. No. So, okay, would you tell people what you know of Harold? Can, can we can we get that from you? Uh, well, when he was in Neighbours, he went missing for a while, didn't he? Then he came back with lost memory. <laughs> and boo dude, thank you for the host. How are you, dude? Um, so, so Harold Duval, what do you know about him? Um, I know everything that you've told me about him, which is that he's the legitimate or the in the, the original oh, heir of the Duval. Oh. Um, possibly the legitimate heir, as he is first in line for the throne before he was dispossessed, and that he could have a fairly serious gripe with his dad and whoever it is that's following on from his dad. So I, th I yeah, he's one to watch. I think. I think thing, things with him could become quite interesting if he gets the right support. And the right whisperings in his ear. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? It's 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 just that you need you need the right the right people behind him. What's it? Um. And and you know we we might be those people. There are many many stories about the reasons why he has been dispossessed. 
Um, yeah. Whether these are true or not remains to be seen, and I think it would be an interesting investigation for uh, certain members of historical societies to perhaps take a look into the truth of these matters and document them. I, I, I certainly think that might be interesting myself. Now, whether this has already happened or not is entirely up for debate. I'm mm. sure I know someone who can check. Yeah. I, well, I'd certainly be interested to find out. Because um, I have to admit, I, I, the, the only thing that is, is sort of frustrating me with, with writing this is the, the amount of information on Harold is basically non-existent. Yeah, I've noticed that. His name's um, there, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, he's, he's, and some he's allegations. obviously... Yeah, he's not meant to really be a thing. But that's also given us a lot of freedom as well. In the what we what we're writing, we're sort of creating a character, and then we're we're going to basically have to send that to Frontier and go. Uh, this is what we think. What what do you think? Um, which is interesting. Uh, the whole situation we're in at the moment. I would with, love with... to see. I would love to see Frontier make a complete distinction between what they consider to be canon, and what they consider to be fan canon or fanon, if you like. Yep. Because I like that. I'll be honest, there's, there's there's quite a lot of confrontation that I've had between myself and Frontier in regards to the RPG about some of the content that I wrote in there in the first draft, and their statement to me was that they create canon, and my statement back to them recently on the second draft has been that I want to be able to discuss levels of canon, levels of what's real and what's not in this fictional universe, um, because an RPG, for example, is something that's put there as a framework to create stories. If you set it in a particular universe, like in this case we've set it in the Elite universe, you're given a framework to create stories within that universe. That ne that doesn't necessarily mean that those stories become canon. Those stories become second degree canon or fanon. It's fan created canon. Um, and the same thing can be true for other people that work with Frontier to create stories alongside what their stories are going to be because they can't populate the entire galaxy with stories. You can't populate the entirety of the bubble with stories for individual people and characters. And the stuff that people try and get... The the, the thing that... Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to work this out in my head as I'm saying it. The way that stories tend to work is you get engaged on a character's journey. That's how the best stories work. And you can't write individual character stories on a global scale or a galactic scale. You have to leave that to other people to do. You create your universe and your galaxy and the evolution of the the king, the queens, the emperors, everything else. You sort all that out. The individual people, the toilet cleaners, the gardeners, the landscapers, the programmers, the pilots, you let the fans do that. And if you like what you're hearing, or if you can work with those fans, then you can create magic. You can create a universe populated by magic. I thank you. Indeed. And... <laughs> We've got a bit preachy there, I do apologise. No, it's mm -hmm. perfect. And and I, I do understand what you mean, because we're kind of straddling that line at the moment with this whole Harold story. I think a lot of people are, but yeah. th this is where I was coming to with Frontier's engagement needing to be consistent. They need to be either yes or no about fan-created content. They can't just keep being wishy-washy about it and saying yes, we'll allow it sometimes, but not others. If they want to allow it, then allow it accept it, acknowledge it, and say, this is where it sits in our canon. This is where it sits, as far as we're concerned, in our storylines. And if they want to ignore it, they can ignore it. This is what George Lucas does, or did. This is what Disney do with Star Wars stuff. This is what the Star Trek franchises do. This is what other sci-fi franchises, Stargate SG-1, Firefly, everyone that has comic books, the Marvel expanded universes, they all exist in independent places, depending on where they've come from. Yeah. That's what Frontier need to embrace, is that kind of diversity in the mm. content they can have attached to their thing. And all it will ever do is put them in a good position to say, yeah, we accept this stuff. We want to embrace everything that's going to diversify our portfolio and make our game special, a multimedia extravaganza, which is what we've all been saying from day one. Mm. Yeah. And I think we're getting there. Also, Kate, thank you for the host. Yeah. Um, we're, we're getting there. Um... But it's, I think we are. We just need that it, last know. step, that last that last commitment from Frontier, get us over that line and say yes, we're okay with it. That's yeah. what we need. And once we've got that, sky's the limit, I think. And the press it and the media be... and everybody else out there is going to take notice of it and say that's what we want to do. It'll it will be very interesting to see 
whether or not they allow us to try and push this Harold story. Like, how far they let us push it. Um, well, it's like, you look at a lot of the other content that goes in the game, and there's the whole thing with Galcop last year, which I don't, yeah. I don't know how, I don't know where that's going now. But they let me run with there. that. No, it's still there, yeah. yeah. It's, they've, they've let that run. Yeah. And that's doing well. They've let one yeah. of the player factions become an official power play faction. That's proof yeah. that they actually, that's proof that they've let it be done. So formalize yeah. it, I say. Yeah. Let it's... other people run with it. And um, and um... like I mean, the... you know, Dan <laughs> and I, Dan and I were having a conversation the other day where we were saying one of the things we would do if we were frontier is uh, we would have a look through YouTube and in particular YouTube and Twitch and uh, you'd basically hire certain people and yeah. and, and have I, them I, as I, paid they, content they, creators. They're, they're, commu they're basically commu almost community liaison in a way because you'd be paying a couple of full-time elite streamers or, or YouTubers or whatever to just be making content about elite that shows lots of different facets of the game that's doing different stuff every day that is more or less in the game through stream. Well, isn't know, this kind of where they were trying to go with the Pioneer thing? And originally they yeah, had this affiliate see program. The, and... See, the, the, the Pioneer thing is is cool, um, but it's not quite the same. It's, it, it, you know, it's it's akin to, you know, going to Green Man Gaming and getting a coupon for your, your overlay or going to, you know, you can, you can affiliate yourself with lots of, lots of companies or, or whatever. Um, I mean, that, you know, Frontier, they do more than most with theirs. You know, we're really lucky. We can, we can just ask for giveaway stuff. Mm. We can, like, say we're giving away some ship ship kits. We're not paying for them out of our pocket. We just we email them and say, hi, we did some giveaways in our stream. Because that's kind of like the, the, the um, you know, the kickback from showing off their game and generally being quite, you know, <laughs> praiseworthy about it most of the time. Because... <laughs> we genuinely like it so um but it would be different to actually take on someone who's a, it, see this is this all kind of like we were talking about this this was all kind of a kickback from um one of the live streams wasn't it um and you know we love ed and we love zach and we love ed he's just the nicest guy ever um but from that standpoint his job is not a streamer He's not a live streamer. That's not his job. It's not his career. It's not his, um, it's not his area of of expertise, if you know what I mean. And that's not to like belittle or to sign, kind of like you know degrade anything that he does when he streams on that on the YouTube channel or on Twitch. Um, but if they if Frontier were to say actually bring on people that did more of the streaming that, that were more you know uh, that was their area. Established. And link that, yeah, more established. You know, it sounds like we're we're trying to like plug ourselves for this job, but we're really <laughs> not. We don't want. I I wouldn't want that job, you know. And I, I don't think I don't even know if Graham would want that job. Um, maybe I don't know. I don't know. It, I don't know. I, I, it's, it would it would it, it would yeah. tie you down a lot, and it would be very constricting. But if you know, this but is a hyper, 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 my stream is built around elite, so yeah, then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's um, not it's not we're not. It sounds like we're talking about ourselves, but we're not really. We're talking about a hypothetical person that does the same, yeah. you know, as, that is a Twitch streamer or or whatever, or a YouTuber. Obsidian um, would be another great example. Yeah, there's like there's loads of loads of great, you know, um, fucking like if you wanted if you wanted the tip top, you'd get Scott Manley, wouldn't you? If he'd fucking do it, but you wouldn't, obviously. Oh God, you no. know. Um, that man's voice makes me want to vomit. I'm sorry. Oh, really? I think his content's amazing. It's just his voice winds me up. Oh, oh wow. wow! That's my subjective That's... opinion. I do apologise. Um, the, the, to be honest with you, the the streamer, if I were Frontier, the streamer I would move heaven and earth to employ. Being completely honest, Malik. Yep. Me. No, Malik. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Malik. Oh. Um, no, you'll note Dan and I both fucking said yeah. it. <laughs> I that's, would like. That's I'm, not accidental, I'm, I'm, Malik. I'm sorry. Like to be totally honest with you, this is this is where I like I couldn't give a shit about saying who is you know trying to sound like you are. Malik is a better streamer than me and Graham. At, oh, fuck like, I'm, right. like I'm not. That's not to be horrible to you or anything, and it's oh. I don't care if I'm being horrible to myself. 
if you want to watch a stream to the earth just because if, of his Facebook if, picture. If if you want to watch a stream run by someone who is articulate, knowledgeable, um, knows what the fuck he's talking about at any given time, um, and will answer questions and just knows what the fuck he's doing, then yeah. But that's but I sit there and I go, yeah. oh wait, piece of candy. Yeah, but great. you, well, you got to do that. Brilliant. Don't you? That's brilliant. <laughs> but everything about the setup and everything like that, it's yeah. the, it's that. Showing that would be the professional. Be. That would be the professional stream package that Frontier would be like, you know, would be gold dust for them to have as their official fucking streamer. Yep. Like, just you know. Yeah. No, uh, que no question. Thing, that would be. No he, question. He he would be the person that I I think would be, like personally, if I were Frontier, I wouldn't stop at one. There'd yeah. be several. Um, it'll be too late soon though because he'll be snapped up by Twitch and get his sub on so. <laughs> um, but but yeah Malik is is oh he's got the same picture on his Twitch stream as well yeah. cool um, yep Ma Malik's good. such a wonderful like a wonderful presence within the elite community We and, and you know it, it makes me very proud that, that we have streamers like Malik under the sovereignty banner um it, yeah. Um, Bognogus, exactly. Uh, and let, let's be honest, one of the reasons that the Sovereignty works as a streaming group is that we have very, very unique and different streamers within it. When Dan streams Elite, his streams are entirely different from Malik's. Malik's streams are entirely different from mine. Um, my stream is basically unique on Twitch. I haven't found anyone else who essentially doesn't play the game and just sits and talks for the most part. Um, I, I, yeah. It, it's, it's something that does work, but there, there, there is definitely, there, there, there is definitely an idea and, and something to be said about the idea of bringing on content creators as a company like uh, Frontier um, to really, really push, especially with something like Elite, mm. uh, to really, really push the game. I'm, um, I'm really, sub I'm kind of, I mean, you see companies do stream on their own Twitch channels. Like you see games, Warframe does it, Warframe streams on their own Warframe channel. Uh, when there's big releases and stuff, you will see you know, Battlefield stream on Battlefield or, or EA or whatever. But there's not... Um, it. You'd think in this day and age, and I think it's something, because when I was speaking to the dude that works, that is now a streamer liaison for Telltale, you know, the guys that do all the, like, the adventure games for all sorts of stuff, like Walking Dead and things like that. He's He's been employed now as, like, a, a, a dude he was doing, I think he was doing artwork or something like that before. Now they put him in charge of, like, liaising with streamers and YouTubers. To make sure that they've got the games and that they're playing the latest Telltale games when they want it and stuff, but it it seems like devs are only just kind of cottoning on to this whole thing now, where they're turning around and going, hang on, hang on a minute, if we if we have like you know decent streamers playing our games, people are going to see the games and they're going to be interested and maybe they'll buy them, and maybe the streamers can answer questions about the games and and maybe say nice things about them, and it's like. This it seems like it's a fucking revelation, and there's still the majority of of games developers and stuff that don't seem to realise that they've got this amazing, you know, force at their hands if they want it to help, you know, show off their their fucking games and their products. They don't seem to realise what uh, you know the impact that Twitch can have on a game's success. I completely agree with that, Dan. And yep. Something recently has actually kind of highlighted that as well. Have you heard the story that, um, is it Take-Two Interactive have decided to shut yep, down one the, of the, the modded the, things? Uh -huh. You mean the uh, reason the GTA, that, that the I will stuff. not be playing Grand Theft Auto or yeah. anything from that well, company on my channel ever again? I don't yeah, know what other people you did, but Nerdcubed uh, suggested to everybody that rather than complaining about it on forums, um, hit the dislike button on Steam. And I've reduced, seen this. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the GTA overall... 5's mm -hmm. overall review to mostly oh, negative. Yep, it's tanked. Yep. Yep. I, I, yep. I left a review pointing out that I was a partnered streamer who had started adding Grand Theft Auto into my yeah. like content, and I had. And yeah. I will not oh, be I mean, it's, playing uh, it. Yeah. It's, but the comments and the like, threats I mean, and all like, that kind of stuff know. doesn't make any difference. It's looking at their sales. 
you mm. you interfere with their point of sale and you'll get attention. Yep. Yeah, and it, it yeah, worked. For sure. They released a, a yeah. statement on the back of that as well. Oh really? Well I yeah. Take I two have that. released a statement. Uh, sorry, Rockstar released a Rockstar statement released going. A statement, yeah. Um, mm. It basically the, the the statement is a big old. We didn't do this. Take two did it. I'm sorry. If, if, it's <laughs> it's, it's another it's well. another example of the the whole shareholders calling the shots, isn't it? Again, yeah. Prof, yeah. like things like that. If if they wanted, if they actually knew anything about the fucking games industry at all, and again were in touch with stuff with things like Twitch, YouTube, things like that, they'd see the massive fucking market in modded roleplay servers in GTA mm. that's exploded on Twitch in the last six months or so um, bringing in 20,000 viewers per str like some of these streamers getting 8,000 10,000 20,000 viewers the the amount of interest in it is insane it is. if they just made it an official thing if they actually took charge of it and went right well fuck this is great let's make official roleplay servers official modded content let's open it up to Steam Workshop and let people create models and um, you know, create uh, you know buildings and interiors for the map that people can import, and then have other places to hang out in their roleplay. Fuck! It would be just, yep. yeah, just, it would be insane. It would um, take over a lot of the, the 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 market in a big way. Um, I just don't, but basically, yeah. uh, crazy. To, to answer chat, um, basically, they they have made uh, they have declared modding illegal in Grand Theft Auto. Um, they sent a cease and desist order to the makers of the Open 4 mod, which is mm -hmm. the key backbone mod for single-player modding in Grand Theft Auto 4 and mm -hmm. 5. Mm. Um, my big problem is, A, they went over after single-player mods, which is yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Um, people have already paid you your fucking money. What they do from it in, in single-player from then on is up to them. When you're talking about a multiplayer product, that, that's not the same thing. Um, the other problem with this, of course, is Grand Theft Auto 5 Online. Grand, Grand Theft Auto Online is full of fucking hackers and cheaters and yeah. problems. Why the fuck are you going after? No, fuck off. And then why, not, thirdly, why not just let people have than, it? Yeah. Worse than all of this, when you actually start investigating this story, you discover that they've done things like send private investigators <laughs> after these people. Uh, yeah. Take two literally hired private investigators oh, and sent them insane, after the makers of the Open 4 mod. Insane. I'm allegedly. sorry. Allegedly. It is, it is crazy. Yes, alleged, allegedly. <laughs> thank you, Sellerson. Um, but the fact that, that, that. No. And so I'm afraid. Like, and not being funny, they make Civilization one of my favourite game series of all time. You will not mm. be seeing me playing it on stream. Uh huh. Um, done. Well, it Just, all comes in the back as well that Take Two Interactive have said that. Um, they want to monetize everything. They've hinted in yep. one of their press releases that they want to basically microtransaction everything. And they they're making enough money that, that they the are under monetizing their That's customers. it, under monetizing. If they, if they, well, I mean, they, you know, if they want to, if they want to monetize, if they want to make more money, then it's simple. They just need to make fucking GTA 6. Mm. Also, they're going to make fuck tons off of Red Dead Redemption 2. Well, so I, I, you know, well, well, they were going to, yeah. Mm, yeah, there's, <laughs> but you, you, you know. You know as well as I do that 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 principal gamers that really will will say, oh, you know, I don't, blah, 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 but they'll still go out and fucking buy the games because they want to they want to play the games. Um, there's it will be the minority I would imagine that will will resist to the point of not playing a game that they really really want to play. Yeah. Um, but... And sorry everyone, I will stop uh, raging. And uh, Thargoid, <laughs> we will catch you. We will catch you later. Also, everybody, um, Thargoid has organised something awesome. Um, uh, we will be organising how we're going to do payment for all of this and how we're going to organise getting them to you and whatever. But there is a limited edition sovereignty patch being created. Um, and uh, Ian is, is getting them created. Uh, we're going to work out exactly how much they're going to cost each and all of that sort of thing. Uh, the way we're going to do it is you'll have to pay for the patch and for postage and packaging. We'll then round it up so that it's a whole number, so that if it's eight uh, eight seventy six, we'll just round it up to nine pounds. Everything that is um, made on top of Ian's costs, he has insisted go to special effect. He will awesome. not make any Good money. I, I wanted him to, to to take the extra for the work he's done. Yeah. Um, no, he, he will not take a penny. He is giving the money to special effect. So, 
uh, just salutes and and as as Sellers and says, round of applause for him because that's that's fucking great of him and he's made Wee. himself a, a lot of work to do with this. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, uh, thank you, thank you so much, Ian. You're awesome. Um, and and so uh, yeah, so special effect will. We'll uh, we'll we'll make a little penny out of this. Um, really cool, Matt. When we do this properly, this is obviously not a properly proper one. But when we do this properly, we need to organise how much of a cut you're taking from this sort of thing as well. This one, obviously, no one's making anything, so th- there's nothing for you to take. Um, no cut for you. But when when we do this properly, Matt is the designer of the sovereignty logo. We would have to to organise what what he wants to make from from each sale that's only fair um uh so yeah we'll we'll have to talk to you about that matt and and no i know you're not um and hello again paul watson hello (laughs) um all the awesome people are here tonight i never get over this that that people like paul like yourself like kate like dan grub like drew Come on to my stream and and talk about the incredible stuff you're doing. Um I What am I gonna talk about when the RPG's finished? Shit. Law. RPG uh, two. The sequel. Oh god. Uh, don't, don't tell my wife that one, she'll kill you. Whoa. Then you do then you do Star Citizen tabletop game. <laughs> That'll be out before the actual game. <laughs> <laughs> Play the play the tabletop game of the forthcoming game. Commander Duel 27. Yeah. Thank you so much for the you could, you could you could get people to design like um you know all the ships as little little figures like the X Wing game and not make them and then charge people three hundred dollars for them. And Convo, um I, I did have an absolutely incredible weekend. Um Gemma's away uh, for the next uh, well until tomorrow. She she went back this morning and, and comes back tomorrow. Um, she's gone back to the UK. Uh, cause she's got a, uh, a a doctor's checkup and that sort of thing. Nothing yeah, like nothing to worry about or major or anything like that. She just uh, just some letters, some T's to cross and some dots to I and that sort of thing. Um, and. Uh, so yeah, um, Sunday we, we we spent together, which was which was lovely. Um, um, Space Turtle TV, thank you so much. Um, our charity work is something that is incredibly, incredibly dear to us um, in this group, and it always will be. Always, always. Um, and Grey and Geek John, thank you so much for the follow. Really, really appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Um, that that's something that that this this player group can just unreservedly be proud of, and and to be honest, go on about. Um, we have done an uh, uh, for for a bunch of idiots playing a game about spaceships on the internet. To have raised over thirty thousand pounds in two years. Yeah, we're um, gonna, gonna triple that next year in one hit. We uh, we've got a lot to be proud of. We we really do. Next um, next year we want to do a hundred grand. That's yeah. We have big plans for next year. Um. <laughs> For, for Project One Six Eight next year. Well, it might not be One Six Eight, but yeah, it might might be, might be <laughs> bigger than that. Sh- <laughs> One Six Nine. <laughs> hey. Um. And yeah, the the that is that is one thing where, like normally, I'm very. Well, you 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 guys know me well enough. I suffer from imposter syndrome, something fucking chronic. Um, I, I've looked into it, and I know that, that that is what I suffer. Like it's it's obviously that's what it's called, you, you know. Yep. Um, and and 
and I suffer from it, something chronic, you know that I don't particularly believe myself to be a great dreamer, I don't believe myself to be a particularly talented person or anything like that. Um, but the one thing that I am just unreservedly proud of, and unreservedly, like, yeah, I did good, is is our charity work. That, that is the one thing. Um, and uh, Hokey, a mega ship that's obviously military in nature, don't know anything more than that. You know anything about the Wells class carrier, Sellerson? Hey, what? Do you know anything about this Wells class car- carrier that's being built Not at the moment? Doing. No. Um, this is new, basically. Um, Matt, wow, thank you. My Corvette, my 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 Conda does not look like a Corvette. You you, you no, just just no. <laughs> you disgust me. <laughs> um, I've never flown a ship with the word Federal in it, and I never will. Never ever. Um. So, it's interesting, Sellerson, that you said earlier that your dream is that they take the bubble from us. Mm -hmm. Because two years ago, I made those predictions. And in those predictions, I said what I thought would happen between then and now in terms of mechanics that would be introduced and I predicted that at about this point we would see the invasion begin which certainly seems to be <laughs> precisely what's happening again um, Didi Tarjan's got you plugged there um... oh god here goes Captain Smug again oh Tarjan <laughs> you think this is bad imagine what's going to happen when they actually do take the bubble from us all those people who have spent two years telling me that it's not going to happen. I, 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 I'm i going to be a bit smug, I'm not going to lie. And way out, Walton, thank you so much for the follow. Um, I, I do believe that that's what's going to happen. Um, everything... Everything I have seen so far has played into those predictions. And every prediction I've made up until this point has been right. Like, no one can deny that. Um, Even down to calling when the invasion would start. Um, So, without being too smug, do you really think that's what's going to happen? Do you think they're going to be brave enough to do it? Ooh, that's putting me in a bit of a predicament. Um, if I'm being honest, given what I've read and given essentially what I know about what they've done so far and the way they've approached these things, I don't think so. No. Sadly, I've got to say no. Um, because they've they've come out and said that as far as they're concerned, the Thargoid invasion aspects of it all are, are going to be limited to a certain area of the galaxy. It's not going to be all over the place right away. It's going to gradually come across, but you'll still be able to go and do the other things you were wanting to do in Elite, like trade and explore and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, that's what Colonia is so, for. I don't... I think if, if they are going to do it, it may be a very long-term plan. Like It may take a couple of years for them to get to that point. Um, hang on, hang on, sorry. Sorry. To, oh, sorry, what? Kate has just said... Really, Kate? Can you, can you, can you link that? Apparently... The elite release of 2.4 is going to be the same weekend as Fantasticon. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, that's hilarious. Oh, that really? Reserve my streaming pod, please. Yeah. <laughs> I'll need a rider. <laughs> Three bottles of JD. 48 cans of Carlsberg. A couple of towels. Dominoes. There's going to be someone with a rift over there that I can use. Dominoes. Lol. Uh, can't you yeah, bring, can't you bring yours? You called it. 
Well, yeah, just bring your Rift. Yeah, that yeah, we get, there. get in a box, then yeah, it comes in a nice box. Um, just, just, just leave out the things you don't need, like shoes and t-shirts <laughs> and shit. You can buy all that. You can't. You can buy a Rift over here, but you know it'd be cheaper to go to Primark and buy some t-shirts. Just leave those behind. Easy. <laughs> bring the Rift. Okay. Okay. Have you just have you just possibly said something a bit early? Maybe. Oh no! Hang on. No, it just says that it's due to coincide due to arrive from the third quarter 2017, as this coincides beautifully with the fantastic on dates this year. And as the Frontier team have always been so supportive of our events over the last three years, we're certain there's something special from the team. All very exciting. Either that or Kate might have just... They, they, they said that their thing is through the third quarter, so it can come out as late as the end of September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm well, spoilers? <laughs> <laughs> like, let's go mm. with spoilers. Um, not sure if misread or spoilers. I, I'm going to go with misread. No, no, misread. Misread. I know nothing. Yep, yep. Misread. Complete misread. Let's go to yes. oh, okay. assumption. Yeah, there you go. Yep, there you go. Yep. Hopeful assumption. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, 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 this is this is this is awesome. Um, right. So, uh, Salazan, how much longer are you live for, sir? Um, ten minutes ago. Ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I can probably right. last another twenty minutes without pissing people off. Okay, right, if you don't mind, I'm quickly going to go and grab some fluid to put in myself, uh, but I'll just leave you three chatting, uh, because you three are infinitely interesting, so that's not a problem. Um, and uh, Is he just going to go and deflate his head? Yeah, what? yeah, just stick a pin in it, and, well, I'm going to need to do that to get out the door. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm quickly going to go and do a thing where I grab myself uh, a drink. Um, I'll be back very, very shortly. In the meantime, these three will keep you entertained. I will see you shortly. Who? Cool. You're in charge, by the way, Dan. Oh, great. What do we do now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad he's gone. He's an arse. What is... Dreaming? I don't know. No idea. Anyway, I've got a bit of a dilemma because I need to decide which pizza I'm going to order. Mexican hot. Always. Difficult. Nah, I'm trying to steer, steer clear of the hot stuff at the moment. Mexican mild then. Yeah, Texas barbecue was usually my go-to, but yeah. Mm. So hints and tips then, how do I get my python? I want to do some trading now. I want to go back online in the game. I want to get some some Python action. What's the quickest way to mine myself from a T7? You haven't got a Python? No, I play this game two hours Jesus. a month. Uh, do you want a really easy way to make money? Yeah, always. Just go, always. Just go exploring. I tried that. I didn't make enough money, and it took too long. Hey, you make loads of cash now. Since since two point three, the the like. Stuff like terraformable water worlds and earthlikes are worth fuck tons. I can never find any of them. Yeah. Well, they've even got that even... road to riches thing too. Oh, is that like a? Uh, it's, it's like it's, a guide that tells all... you where to scan shit in the bubble, doesn't it? To yeah, that that's make... the yeah. in bubble only, and I think yeah. it pulls like three hundred million or something. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. It's in bubble for the, hey. there's actually a modified one that's Jeez. um Earth likes water worlds and terraformable high metal content. Go scan all this shit and sell this yeah. data that all these people have already had <laughs> tons of times before, but they'll still pay you millions of credits for. Oh, that system. Yeah, no, we've never heard of that one. <laughs> hey, there's this new planet. It's called <laughs> Earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, man. That's that conversation done, then. I don't know. I need I need some more coffee before I can talk about anything. <laughs> Brain's not. I got. I woke up at four o'clock this morning because it was too warm and couldn't get back to sleep again. Oh, I'll have a look at that and give that a go. Yeah, I might do that. So actually. your um your role playing thing project, just roll with it. Is it just mm. D&D stuff, or is it is it diversifying out into other things? Obviously, not including the Elite Encounters thing at the minute. Uh, well, we only started yesterday, so... Uh, but yeah, at some point, probably. But at the moment, we're just doing once a week on a Sunday. Um, once a week on a Sunday. Because every, obviously, everyone else that's taking part in it are all streamers as well, so... And half of them have full-time jobs also. Um, so yeah, it's the only thing that people have got time for. Did you find it worked uh, well then, streaming um, RPG sessions? Because I know, I know quite a lot of oh, players brilliantly. do not like it and think it's a bit of no, a problem. No, it, it. it worked great, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, we didn't even, uh, I mean, we didn't even do any combat or stuff for for the f first four hour session. It was all just in character, just literally just role play. You know, we're here, do this. We're doing this. We'll do that. What can we do now? We'll do this. That was that was it, and it was hilarious. It was it was great fun. Um, so uh, we did, we just one one of the one of the really fun bits, the memorable bits, was we ended up in a in a in a store trying to buy a, a box because we we were smuggling some weapons, but we'd accidentally kind of broken the box, so we needed a new one to make it look like it hadn't been tampered with. <laughs> and uh, some woman, like just a random female character who uh, overheard us pretending, saying that we were like a traveling magic, you know, entertainment act. She was like, oh, I love magic. Show me some magic. Wizard chose a bit of magic and then can't. He, he ended up turning one of her shoes green, but couldn't turn the other one green. So she got in a hissy fit. One of our characters uh, went and basically told her to shut up. The woman then told her to shut up. So uh, Ty, Ty Time, who's the streamer who was playing that character, basically said, well, I slap her in the face and basically knocked her out, knocked her down to the floor, but did knock her out. Then I tried, then I basically said, well, um, I'm a bard, so I've got like a kind of a, a loot type instrument. It's like, right, well, we're all trying to sort of just run out of the door, you know, and get out of here. I'll try and smack her on the head with my guitar thing as we run out, which failed. So she's like then screaming. And then the goblin character is just like, right, I didn't want to do this, but I'm going to put my bladed boots on and kick her in the head to try and finish her off. And none of it worked. None of the roles were like were consistent. They weren't good enough. So she ended up basically just being on the floor, injured but still able to scream like for the for the guards in the town. <laughs> it was just so funny. It was just like we're just running for this like airship thing that we had to get on, and it was just like, yep. Yeah. She knocked her down. I tried to hit her on the head with my guitar, but kind of missed. The other guy tried to boot her in the face with his spiked boots, but kind of missed as well, but sort of, you know, blooded her a little bit. Um, and then we just kind of got away. It was, yeah, it was really, 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 really fun. Cool. Um, and that's what RPG should be. And Hello. yeah, it was, it was great. It was I'm great. back and stuff. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Okay, it's Jabber walking. I'm sending bits, I think. Yeah, DJ Tarjan, I've got to say, Paranoia and Toon were both pretty good games. I've played Paranoia, but I've never actually played Toon, although I do own the book for it. And Kate, thank you for the bits. <laughs> I, I... Words, English, hmm. stuff hmm. and things. Um. Yeah, I, I, I wow, I, that's completely derailed me. Um, so were you just talking about uh, just roll with it and the launch? Yeah, and yeah, all yeah. Of that sort of good jazz. One of the things from yesterday. Yeah. 
it all went a bit well, really, didn't it? It was, it was excellent. Yeah, we had really good feedback. On the whole, there were tiny, couple of tiny little technical things that we more or less sorted as we went. And uh, yeah, apart from that, everything was everything was pretty good. We managed to pull it all together at the last minute, which is, you know, it it doesn't sound like it should be a lot, but when you take into account the fact that we're trying to pull in two partnered streamers, plus uh, three, you know, other affiliate streamers, plus Chaos Dispenser as the DM, and we've got people like Phil that works and has kids as well. Chaos that has kids and works as well. Uh, Crazy Hippie is a full-time streamer, so that's not, you know, wasn't too much a problem. You've got Ty, who's also a full-time streamer, but kind of like, I think she might do a part-time job as well, but I'm not sure. And then, you know, getting all those people together to coordinate to actually fucking be live and in Discord and on Skype and everything goes well, <laughs> that's, that's like really, really a kind of a big, you know, that's a, that's a hell of an achievement. <laughs> to, to coordinate these people, you know, together. Um, like God six, bless six the modern people. world, eh? It's, it's crazy that it all kind of came together at the, at the last minute. We were literally, literally on, on Discord five minutes beforehand getting overlays and things like that all set up before it started. Lol. You know, and then, then we suddenly, you hit that button and everyone's like, oh, the countdown, and then it's like, hey, we're live, look at our cool overlay and all of our cool professional shit that looks like it's really, you know, well rehearsed and stuff. Oh. Um, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was awesome. It was good fun. It's, it's good no. about stuff like that, though, because it's a little scary, which makes it even more fun. I have to admit, Gemma and I, uh, Gemma and I sat and watched most of it, and we were giggling. Oh, cool. We, we thoroughly enjoyed it. Yep. Chaos um, Spencer is awesome. He's great. He's really, really good. Um, yes at doing this stuff and he completely wrote the campaign it's not a, from a book or anything he's not taking it from anything he's completely done it from scratch so it's um it's pretty impressive um okay don't i often wonder this some of us have such you, you know we, we have real lives and all that sort of thing and you know i i have it when when you know when, when Gemma and i go out and we it's meet friends, friends and and, <laughs> and and it's like you meet friends of friends, and they're like, "Oh, so what do you do?" And you're like, "Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm Twitch streamer." What? I mean, the th the thing is, is like you probably depend it. Yeah, uh, it's easy. Uh, if they maybe know what Twitch is maybe it's, it's an easy conversation. If they don't, oh god. Yeah, maybe you don't necessarily want to even know your kids' friends, parents. You know, depending on what sort of people they are, or what I don't you know. know. Kids. I don't, like want, I don't just, want to know my kids' friends' parents. Yeah. Why, why would you even care? Um, I don't want to know my kids' parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And can we get a shout-out for Steez? Um, yes, that was that was a bit weird. I, we went out for a drink the other night and walked into the cafe. And uh guy goes to me, Oh, hello, DJ! Um, which Which was slightly surreal. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Yep. Um, yeah, I can, <laughs> I can well imagine, Kate. Like, well, we we had this at, at Fantasticon both years. You see people overhearing your conversations, and they're just like, "What? Uh, what?" Yeah. Um. But yeah, welcome to the modern world. It's it's weird here. Uh, it really, really is. It's very, very weird here. First time uh, I ever got called by name other than my own was when I, I used to call myself Decker when I was at university, when I was doing instant messages and things like vax notes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And there's one guy in the student union used to yell, Decker! at me every time I came in the building. <laughs> and everybody else had no clue what he was talking about. It was great. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's 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 very strange. Twitch for life, is this game any good? Uh, yes. I haven't but seen that you, one for a while. If you like you, <laughs> this sort of game, this game is very good. Yeah, uh, it's... It, it's that's, that you are, A, essentially asking the crack addicts and the crack dealers <laughs> whether crack is is good, yeah? Um, we, we, we yes, DD all... Chardon, yes, exactly. You're the only person that's got that reference right the first time. Woohoo! <laughs> Everyone always says, what, do you mean Decker from like that guy in Star Trek? No! 
Cyberpunk decker. Well done. Shadowrun, actually, but Cyberpunk's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um... Sorry. Uh, so, so, Twitch for Life, the, the, the truth is, if you like open-world sandbox games and you have a healthy interest in science fiction, then yes, Elite Dangerous is for you. If you do not like games that are very open, if you prefer a game that um, gives you direction, uh, Elite is not for you. Uh, that's the honest truth. Um, if you I, like I missions always... and linear stories, you will not like it. Yeah. Um, but if you do like the idea of a galaxy to inhabit, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, Can you still download thing. CQC separately to the rest of the game? No. 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 They pulled that. Um, I, I, Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the most... Uh, is one of the games that I am looking forward to more than anything else. Uh, I have to admit. And this, Justin, thank you for the host. Do appreciate it, dude. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait. Uh, for Cyberpunk 2077. I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> the... I've, just had a, I've just had a mini raid on my stream. Two people have came in from Commander Strain's stream and said hello. <laughs> mini, hello! Mini raid. Two people. Mini raid. Uh, <laughs> Kate's cat has just joined in the conversation. The cat seems to be trying to do a salute. I think the cat's trying to salute there. Um, I, I, I really do. Um, uh, what, E3 Mofu, that there was no news about Cyberpunk 2077. I think that game firmly falls into the category of we'll know more when they're ready to tell us more. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we'll wait and see. If you if you know where humble bund humble bundles are, they're doing a cyberpunk um, bundle at the moment as well. Well worth it. Oh, are they? I think um, twenty six quids the transition at the minute, and they're doing about eighty or ninety quids worth of additional bonus on top. Take Hang a on a minute. Loads me, of stuff in let me, there. Let me let me let me let me get a link. To that Is this for, to uh... do with the pen and paper stuff? Yeah. Rather oh. than oh oh wow, and sold at under eighty eight and. Uh... Caress MVO, thank you so much for the follows. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, yes. Steve, we are in TeamSpeak, but we're in a hidden room. Um, uh, just while Sellerson's here, and then once once Sellerson uh, has to disappear, we'll be we'll be jumping back up into an open room. Um, and uh, thank you so much for the follows, guys. Sorry, Dan, you were saying. No, I was just trying to look for it on Humble because obviously I'm a Humble partner and I wasn't aware of that. I can't find mm -hmm. it on any of their bundles at the moment. Night Nano Ninja, isn't it the book bundle at the minute? There's two book bundles, one's called Best of Boom Studios, which is digital comics, and the other one is Eisner Nominees, which is uh, digital comics as well. Oh. So there's a bunch of comics, which is cool. Yeah, I think mm, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't see that one come up, because usually I'm pretty hot on those. I get the emails about forthcoming ones and interesting ones I usually keep note of, but mm, maybe. Maybe. Unless it's part of monthly this month. No, monthly this month is uh is Dark Souls two. Oh, okay. That's random stuff, so mm -hmm. Fair enough. Don't know. Um It was in Sellerson's Rider. He he requires velvet clad private rooms wherever he goes. Really, mm -hmm. Sellerson? Do I? I I would never have had you down as a prima donna. No, I'm definitely post Madonna. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, is that the same system? Uh, what? What's this? What? What? what, what? Uh, apparently, someone has a a new active barnacle site in a new system. Oh. So I'm gonna log in real quick and just map the system, see what's up. Hello. See you later, Bognogus. Have a lovely day. Or evening. Uh, whichever bit of the day it is in your part of the world. Um, good God. 
Yeah. It's weird, it's half eleven already. Time has flown. Um, mm. I'm not exactly sure where. Um, if you're, um, I don't know what time you were thinking of when you were finishing up. Yeah. Um, but if it's reasonably soon, I may or may not, well, I'm not may or may not, I am doing a movie night. Oh, are you? Yes. What are you doing? Back to the future. Ha. Awesome. Um, I may well join you. I'm not sure what my plans for this evening are yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to... Like, uh, the part of me is uh, considering... Oh, wow. Hang on. And he's gone. Darky, sorry. Sub noises. Thank you for the sub. Resub, Darky. I really appreciate it, dude. I, I really, really do. Thank you so much. I uh, hope you're having an awesome, awesome day, man. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I need to eat at some point. Um, and I, yeah, I'm not sure uh, what to do, like whether to to finish the stream and 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 deal with food after the end of the stream or like finish relatively soon and then come back on later um cuz I, I yeah uh i'm probably going to be up most of the night so mm -hmm. i might uh i i may well stream again later and i might stream um like might come on and stream some football manager or some some stellaris or something like that uh, um Oh no, Killick. Um, still doing it nice, Jason. Still doing it. Uh, and I'm not going yet, don't worry. Um, and DJ, real quick, uh, I am in TeamSpeak just real fast. Oh. Last one. Uh, Last one. Uh, oh, um, no, I don't think so. Uh, okay. But possibly. We'll get you one day. It will depend. We'll mm -hmm. see. Um, yeah, I, I, I started it the other night, Tarjan, um, we did quite a lot of it, and then, uh, tomorrow night I'll be carrying it on, no, no, well, it, at some points tomorrow night I will be carrying it on, um, because we've got Drew on as well, so obviously quite a lot of that will be talky-talky with Drew, um, because we, we just don't know where we stand with the Thargoids at the minute, do we, Sellers, and... No, 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 it's all mysteries. So, I'm I'm going to be sending in a load of questions to Michael Brooks. Um, Good luck. Well, yeah. Uh, nice, Jason. Uh, it seems to be worth several hundred million. Like, it's a lot of money. Um, I, yeah, the, like... Tarjan's exactly the same. We, it's it's just all up in the air at the moment. We don't know where we stand. We don't know what's going on. We don't know it precisely. I'm not even sure that the war happened anymore. Oh, and uh, Megadurf, thank you so much for the follow. Do appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, I, I I I'm not even sure that the Thargoid War happened anymore. Um, and yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's pretty awkward, isn't it? It's we, we just don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna send him a load of questions. You never know. Um, we we might get uh, we might get some answers. We, we might not. I suspect the latter. But we can try. Uh, is it accurate to say you don't know? Uh, you don't even. Uh, you don't know even what you don't know about the Thargoids. Yes. I. Everything we assumed was correct seems to be possibly incorrect. Um, History is written by the victor. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. Hmm. Um, or, the, uh, or the scribe being coerced by, by the victor. <laughs> oh, an in-game encyclopedia would be wonderful. 
that 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 would be great. I'm not gonna lie. That that would be uh, like like the Civilopedia in the Civ games. I tried to write one, but they made me cut it. <laughs> sad times, man. Sad times. Um, one day I'll I just want point to out the, the the RPG's lore section is going to be really good if I get away with what I've got in it already. Mm. But seventy five thousand words of it are never going to be seen. No. I want it. <laughs> um, and and yeah, and obviously the other question that we'll be asking Michael Brooks is when are we getting a proper emperor? Um, <laughs> what he, night, Darky? Thank you for dropping in. Um, I I will always always ask for that. Oh. You'll get it in Norway, Tarjan. It'll be available on my website when it eventually gets actually physically published. And can block the whole. Thank you so much for the sub. Um, super, super appreciate it, man. Really, really, really do. Thank you so much. Um, right, dudes, yeah, I've got to go because that's gone half yeah, past now. So I was about to say, we, we've you held you long fest. enough. Have a lovely evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, or is any time, mate, you know that. And we'll uh, we'll speak to you again in the near future, no doubt. And uh, I'll let you know what I hear from Michael Brooks, if anything. <laughs> Come Time on. to get the damn book edited. L oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have a lovely evening. And uh, again, thank you for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, this was Sellerson. If you're not following him already, please, 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 for God's sake... Go and chuck him a follow. Um, absolutely worth it. The law master in Elite Dangerous. Uh, thank you again for joining us, Sellers. No worries. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for your um, hospitality chat, people. Always. We'll see you soon, dude. Take care, mate. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Right. The rest of us, let's jump back Microphone up to the open muted. room, shall we? Disconnected. Right. Well, it's just us again now, so uh, yeah, thanks for joining me for that. I'm going to give it a rest now and go and pop off and try and find somewhere a little bit cooler because I am absolutely roasting. I had The reason I've been showing this um, little animation for the last god knows how long is because my computer has been pumping out hot air into my fan, which has been blowing hot air at me, and I think I have now roasted myself. Um, oh, I'm getting loads of nice little comments in the chat from DJ Truth here a lot. That's really nice. Cake Flick says I'm a legend, which is always nice to hear. Um, and yeah, thank you for the follow, everyone who has followed this evening. And that includes Conan the Librarian, Darkin Dragon, Frederick Kjellgaard. I'm going to have to go to my email for the rest. Captain Blow Up Doll. Awesome names. Just awesome. Uh, let me see, where else? Iko Baka, thank you for the follow. Uh, Lee Schofield, thank you for the follow on Twitter as well. Wow. Um... Gazai Hiap, Valkyrian27, Commander Spooky and Talmin. Thank you all for the follows. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, DJ Tarjan is uh, saying that he wants to nerd out with Selzin, and I think that's a, a, a good goal. It's a good goal to want. I'm just going to respond to that. At DJ Tarjan. Nope, that's not his name. That one. So, uh, yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed the the stream this evening. It's been a bit different, and it, not at all what I was expecting to do for my return to streaming. I was planning to uh, just do a kind of general fly around and chat um, and do a bit of trading, because that's essentially what I'm doing. Um, now that I'm back in the hub, or back in the core, or back in the bubble, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, quite looking forward to getting a bit of that at some point, so over the next week we'll do that. Um, and in the meantime, I'm hoping to hear something back about the RPG at some point, so I know quite a lot of people are listening in just to hear about the RPG sometimes, and yeah, I'm still waiting for Frontier to get back to me on it, and uh, hopefully it shouldn't be that much longer, now that everyone's back off their holidays. So I'm going to give it a rest for now, um, and go off and try and cool down. So thanks for watching. I hope you come back next week. Uh, 
if you have enjoyed what you've listened to and you want to follow, then by all means follow this channel on Twitch. Follow me on YouTube at youtube.com slash which is the new URL that I need to get put on all the promotional stuff. Um, and what else? Things like Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, Facebook, all those kind of things. Just do a set for Selizen or Daftworks and you'll find me on there. So, uh, good. Well, Garzini, not much longer to wait, hopefully. We have a... We have a finished book, as far as I'm concerned. It just needs to be edited and approved by Frontier and for me to take out or put in whatever it is they need me to take out or put in. But 95% complete, formatted, laid out, ready to go, and I've got the cover half designed. So, yay. Anyway, enough wittering, enough babble. I'm going to go and I'm going to cool down and I'm going to go and finish off all this editing stuff and hopefully get this online by the end of tonight. We can fingers crossed hope so. So uh, take care everyone, thank you for watching, and I'll be here, same time, same place, next week. Take care guys.